Hey, we are live. Hello. Hey. <laughs> we are Hello. live and organized. Well, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are organized. <laughs> I'm trying. Hello, everybody. How's it going? What's the hey. up, say? Hello, if you are in chat, if you would like to be greeted before the compulsory. Oh my god! That's a lot oh, of bits. Leash. You weren't fucking lying. That's a lot of bits. Wow. I can't count that. <laughs> Still, how many zeros is that? I get cross eyed trying to count know, that, man. That's more than three. That looks like <laughs> you can buy a house in Argentina with that. Hey. D and D house, home of the torn yes. veil. Yeah. Hopefully. Yes. <laughs> I'm here for it. Holy, holy. V, holy. thank you so much for the bits. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, V. <laughs> just, the rest of us just doing Looney Tunes mouth drop right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, Ten thousand bits! Oh my God, V! I think that might be a channel record. God dang. <laughs> Level five hype train. Immediately, just, just right so off the bat. <laughs> wow. And they did some more. My goodness. No, so hang on, no, hang on, no, Soloed hang on. That. That's, uh, hang yeah, on. you That's soloed so a level six hype train. <laughs> <laughs> you broke the music. <laughs> I don't know that color existed with the bits. That's amazing. Oh, and V has to go. Thank you, V. Thank you, V. Thank you, V. Well, hopefully Luca won't die. <laughs> <laughs> After this, I think she can revive three times. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tillaneth is like, you know what? There's boons of money going around. It's fine. But thank you so much, V. Oh, my God. I tell Ness, like, you know, normally I wouldn't, but uh, I recently got this big... Uh, Donation here in hell. It's crazy. <laughs> He's wearing gold chains and diamond rings. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she was already pretty blinged out, but like now. Um, and also, Mitch, thank you so much for the subber web. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need a moment. My, I. My my cheeks are in my eyebrows right now. <laughs> Whoa! Um, hi everyone. Welcome to Tales of the Tales of the Torn Veil <laughs> with us, your friends. Um, of course, it, uh, we shall address the elephant in the room, or shall we say the shark Loro not in the room? Alas! Uh, before we go on much further. Um, the cat's out of the bag. The cat. Oh no! <laughs> we were the no, bag. We were the, the cat's out of the bag and in our hearts forever. <laughs> um, Nye has unfortunately um, had to uh, leave the campaign. It might not be forever. It might be. We're not sure. But we are giving them all the love and all the support. And um, there is a, a spiritual chair here. And a spiritual cat-sized uh, hole in my heart. <laughs> little paw print. <laughs> little heart paw print. Um... Addressing that kind of early on in the story today. Um, but just to let anyone know who didn't hear or see the news, it is very sad. We are very sad, but we will keep the story going. And trust me when I say, although Alora might not be a present player in the story, they're still going to be doing stuff. They still exist in the world. Ooh. So, you know, you know, they're not dead. You know, it's, it's okay. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that is the first piece of uh, update news. But saying that, we did hint to a surprise or two on Twitter. Um, 
Ja. Four of those potentially. So make of that what you will. Mm. But in the meantime, which is my my always phrase that I say way too much. Let's say hello to our I'm uh who who likes cat who has the most cats <laughs> in real life? <laughs> uh I used to live with someone who had a cat. I think that I think that counts. That's <laughs> <laughs> That's my Kevin Bacon one stage away from cat. <laughs> Your bacon number. <laughs> let's let's go in order then. Sure, why not? So let us introduce. You're you've probably never been on his Twitch channel before. I don't know. Um, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful friend playing Luto Bani. We have the amazing JC. I never heard of him. Hi, everybody. I'm JC. Thanks for coming to my channel. Thanks for coming to our lovely D&D stream. I uh, stream video games. I do audio stuff over in Cardan Audio. And uh, I play this game thanks to our lovely DM Key. <gasps> That's me. With you. Oh, wow. No, you meant to introduce yourself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are excited for more Luto Times. Uh, accompanied by... Girl, girlfriend? Are we, are we calling them an item? I think so. Oh. I don't know. She's playing hard to get. She's playing. You never even got me. She's played. But also, yeah. you belong solely to me. She plays a very weird game. <laughs> and you chose her. <laughs> I um, did. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have the amazing. Everybody knows the name. Uh, except for most people, unfortunately, in the world of Isfray, but we can blame the dice on that. It's Tarquin as played by Darian Audio. Hey! Listen to me, and listen carefully. <laughs> I am Dario, and I have come no! to kill you no! all. No! <laughs> he is! I knew I it! I'm <laughs> sorry, something took over me. Um, oh hi everyone in chat. I hope you're having a great day. <laughs> Sorry for being so stupid, but that was fun, and I had to do it. So, um, <laughs> I'm playing Tarquin, you all know who he is, and I'm trying to keep a straight face here, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, your favorite monk, and I am here to kick some ass with him, so I hope you enjoy it. Hey, no hey. Dario. No Dario. No Dario, no, no, no. He can't hurt us. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a nightmare. <laughs> and last but by no means least, the wonderful, the best pronounced name in all of Isifre, Bifon Festes, mm. as played by the wonderful. <laughs> that was a real moan. Dime Package! I am Dan Package, I play Bifon the Stairs, and Wee. not unlike a slab of beef, I am tasty. <laughs> Hardy and I get lodged in your heart. Oh yeah, you do. <laughs> I don't ever want to lose this heartburn. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all guys are great. Um, uh, hi, I'm Key. <laughs> uh, I'm also here. Um, I am here um, to provide seagull sound effects and pretty much nothing else. Um, <laughs> No, I, uh, this world has been, uh, a passion project for a number of years I would not like to explore right now. Please and thank you. Um, <laughs> too many. Um, and it is an absolute honor to bring it to life for you guys in this fashion, uh, and with such wonderful players as well. So, yes. Exciting times. Um... So, I know I know it's been a few episodes of we're actually starting the adventure today, but how do we feel about actually starting the adventure today? Oh my goodness. <laughs> what this is dun what is it Dra dragons and how do you It's oh. just mm, there there are currently there have been no dungeons thus far. 
and dragons do not exist in this array, so right. it's just we're just we're playing a wonderful game of dungeons and um with a lot of homebrew yoked yeah. in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. Do some ready. dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of drawings. Maybe it's drawings of dragons. That's mm. what we're we've all How would we even dragons. know what a dragon looks like? Um, well, they're, to draw they're, them. Myth they're mythological, like they are in real life. Pointed look. Fourth wall break to the camera. <laughs> what the fuck you mean myth? <laughs> <laughs> Pointed fourth wall camera stare. They're mythological, like they are in real life. <coughs> Dragon. Um, dragons. But yes, let's say hello to people. Thank you, Twilight, for sharing all our links. And yes, you can check out more stuff over there. You can get your characters included over on the coffee. You can support our little campaign and also get your own characters inserted into the story. Some of which we might be meeting today. <gasps> Some of which we might have already bloody met, innit, darling? Um, Some of which he might have raised via the d allying with the demon a little bit. Yes, that too. That, that too indeed. Um, but y'all remember Angel, the lovely uh, albino out of, uh, not out of Kokra, the wrong bird, uh, Kenku, the albino Kenku on the I airship. I do. Um, we had a lovely suggestion for a name uh, for Angel. So that was thanks to one of our lovelies who supported uh, Pantown. I, I yeah, think hell yeah. My apologies. Um, of course, we have Luca um, from the wonderful Zombie V. And uh, I don't know who else we're going to meet today. That'd be crazy. Hi, Rihanna. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. <laughs> the guests. <laughs> uh, welcome as well to Vividly. Welcome, hello also to Zombie V, who's already come and gone and just blown our minds. Epic Gaming Jams. Love always saying that name. Always fun. Very, very fun. Love saying yes. Mitch Simi, thank you so much. Oh, have we got an all rhyming group today? Almost. Almost. One day. <laughs> we're all gonna rhyme. <laughs> That's the ultimate yes. goal of any Twitch streamer. <laughs> Honestly. There, or just like just a whole bunch of really great usernames. Um, I, I love love some great usernames. But anyway, uh, without further ado, I do believe we will start. And we're going to start a little differently today. We are going to pick up pretty much exactly where we left off, which, if you missed it, was um, on the Featherboon airship, the ship that is currently carrying our party. Um, over the over the oceans uh, from Ash Sky to Ninut. It's approximately a day's journey via airship, maybe even faster, depending on the technological advances of the airship one happens to be riding on. Uh, I, Loro, having been um, detectorating various things on the ship, yeah, uh, that's was able word. to find... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually. No, no, actually. Um, <laughs> detectorating things on the ship. Found a small, slightly orange and blue blurred uh, tail uh, curling around the uh, corner of one of the ship areas. And was greeted by a very interesting character um a, a whole cat slightly taller than usual cat called right. chrysanthemum uh <laughs> who had some strange words to say but seemed to be working for uh aloro's um deity of choice a spirit of connection if you will uh Sinian, the, the cat the cat creature meow and Sinian had set uh, not only Iloro, but their new friends, a task. Which turned, well, giving them a gift, I think was the phrasing. Which turned out to be two ginormous geese. 
Um, one of which um, was successfully defeated, uh, much to Luto's enjoyment on the ship, so giant <laughs> goose meat can be procured. The other goose, meanwhile, flew away. And this is where we shall begin for now for our cold, cold opening, if you will, as we're soaring over uh, what seems to be the beginning of a new land for, I think everyone would probably have been here, even if it was for a stop off on an airship. So new land relative to the story, new land. <laughs> um, but as the... Uh, Goose is vanquished and his friend flies off into the distance with a massive <laughs> You all see this figure fade into view from the tip of the tail to the tip of the ears um, Standing at a good foot tall or sitting at a good foot tall uh, slightly crooked lean, almost muscular. If any of you have seen the Cheshire Cat from uh, Alice the Madness series, you'll know the kind of vibe of of crooked kit we are talking. And I've already forgotten the voice, so here we go. <laughs> well, now that was a very successful gift, don't you think? See, usually I know cats bring their master's gifts alive or dead, but you seemed able to handle it pretty well. And who are your friends, Aloro? Hmm, Aloro looks over to the three of you um, in front of this strange <laughs> blue and orange cat. Hi. Hi. What is your name? Bifon. <gasps> and yours? Chrysanthemum. An honor. Bows their head slightly. Uh, my name is Luto. Uh, I am Alora's friend, and I want to say, Chrysantha, thank you. Uh, uh -huh. I'll do like the uh, eyebrow raise thing. Yeah, yeah. I've never, I've literally never heard that before, except for the three hundred ninety-eight times before today. Okay, well, friends gives me a high wing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the effort, though. And you, strange gosling. What of you? Looking at Tarquin. What do you mean? What is your name? Uh, when I am in a good mood, so I am going to tell you. My name is Tarquin. <laughs> A pleasure to me. Uh, you seem insulted that I ask your name. Why is this? Uh oh. Because. Roll for initiative. No, I'm sorry. Um... <laughs> you can certainly fucking try. <laughs> because I am some kind of a big deal around this part. Ah. Oh. Really? Oh, yes. Do you want me to uh, check my memory banks or save you the embarrassment? You should check. <laughs> I will. Let's see the natural one. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a one! It's, it's a, not, not a It's not, it's not a, a two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tarquin, Tarquin. Well, those who follow Simeon have seen quite a lot. Are you the one who hmm, tripped over the stairs when you were a child? 
fell on your face. Uh, it happened before, and I once uh, hmm. accidentally killed a cat. If that is also <laughs> something that you should remember. Well, it won't be happening again, I can assure you of that much, my friend. Ah, the mysteries of destiny, we never know what happens. Besides, Buttercup was a bitch. Oh. Ah. <gasps> You know. No, I know. Of course I know. Do I seem like I do not know my cat brethren? Anyway, you bore me. Um, so before I decide to just push you off the ship. My dear Alora, Mistress is very happy with your progress. It is time. Your mission is ready. And now I know your little friends will probably miss you. Wait, which is fair enough. What do you mean? We are going to go somewhere with Aluro? Aluro just kind of looks at the ground, conflicted. Well... Aloro serves Simeon, my mistress, mistress of most of us cat folk. It just so happens that there are a few that are unaccounted for. But by helping us, by helping her mistress, her magical giver, donator, then maybe your mission itself will also go easier. Okay. You would still be able to keep in touch, but this is something that any follower of Simeon would wait their whole lives for. I mean, I don't want to make it difficult, but I think Ludo would be <laughs> like, <know>. uh, <laughs> is, is this what you want, Deluru? I mean, I think it's for the best. I can help and give you guys some things that will help on the mission do so in a way that doesn't bring the angst of a cat deity on all of us. Well, if this is what you think is best for you, then that is what I want for you too. Um, they nod. Kind of definitely understanding it's a, it's a difficult decision. Um, and go goes in for a hug. Yeah, big Gotta old. Go in, go in for a group hug. Group hug. Group hug. And um, you see, you well, you first hear a third <laughs> as a new goose, a new giant goose, appears, kind of gliding at the side of the airship. That's a lot of fucking geese to them! You are the- did you are turkey? Like, is this usual? I've never seen this many big geese! You hear <laughs> Captain Barbanus just as he's piloting the ship. Oh, Captain um, Barbanus, you say. Hey, there you go. Hey, hey, hey! I got oh, nice. like, but I'm yeah. so excited to see. <laughs> Come on, stream, I believe in you. It's going to appear in like seven minutes. I'll be like, wow! <laughs> 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 so cool! <laughs> you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll stream on Discord as well. Oh, no. 
don't 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 worry because my internet will, uh, will explode <laughs> okay <laughs> i'll just I'll, I'll do my best just uh i, I appreciate try and it. mention appreciate their names it. in case i don't recognize their <laughs> accents all the time you mean captain <laughs> um and uh you see uh this third giant goose appear um and chrysanthemum turns kind of no nuzzles up to hey nuzzles up to <laughs> sorry nuzzles up to alora's leg galinda is ready when you are to go and alora kind of comes out of the hug holding as many of your hands as they can and kind of nods and goes, I'm not great at goodbyes. And kind of smiles before letting go of the hands and hopping on to, somewhat cautiously hopping on to Giant Goose. <laughs> 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 um, and giving you all a wave as Goose just... <gasps> And just on <laughs> the last sign you see <laughs> of blurred Aloro as Galinda the Goose speeds off. Um, uh, alas. I know, big, big hearts, big hearts. There was no easy way to do it. Yeah. Um, and you see, Chrysanthemum looks to you all and goes, Ah. Well, they uh, they forgot to do some of the important things. So, um, here are uh, their, some of their belongings that uh, they wish to give you. Uh, <laughs> because they told, they just got on the goose and went, apparently. I get, it's just emotions of the moment. I, I get it. Um, so, you all receive to split between you. Oh. Uh, 65 gold. I'll make a note of this in the Discord. Uh, to split betwixt you however you shall wish. You had to make it 65. <laughs> that's, I, that's what is in the inventory. I'm just going based off of my Loro's inventory. <laughs> Fine, we'll split it and I guess we'll tip the DM. 40. <laughs> I'm not here. <laughs> um, there is also the bat, one of the basilisk fangs from the monster fight. There is, or you, do, you can split these up, however, whenever you show show wish. Uh, one healing potion, and last, but by absolutely no means least. The sack of cat nuts. <gasps> I didn't think we were going to get the bag of cats. You have the bag of cat nuts. Uh, which is a homebrew item that you should be able to add to the inventory of whoever you sh so wish to hold on to it. Alright, I put it in the chat. Um, Ludo looks at the belongings and looks to you guys and kind of shrugs. I suppose I could maybe grind up the basilisk fang, make it a pretty good, uh, some kind of, use it as uh, some kind of baking powder, maybe? <laughs> oh, we yes. have to fight that goose. I'm getting tired of all the fish. It has been a lot of fish. Uh, oh, does yeah. anybody want the rest of this healing potion? You could always use a healing potion. I toss it your way. Don't Thank you very much. <laughs> well, uh, as you divvy those things up, I will leave you to it. Uh, should you ever see a cat shrine, feel free to say hello, but maybe be sure to offer Mistress Sinian something for her time. Okay. Thank you. you. Take good care of our friend. 
they shall be looked after, but they are also capable themselves. Oh, and Tarquin, you had yes. that uh, feline friend once before, correct? Yes, when I was a child. And with that, you see a massive Cheshire cat-esque grin as the rest of the body of the cat fades. Toodles! And just... Dissipates into the wind. Was that, that your was pet creepy. cat? Uh... It I didn't remember it looking so strange. Oh. Well, it makes sense that if you're such a legend, you're going to have such a legendary cat. Yes, I think... Uh, maybe it got training after, but I think it was dead. I don't know. Maybe it survived and became a legend just like myself. Okay, guys, I think I know how to figure out who's going to get the bag of cuts. We open it, and whoever picks out the best cat, clearly the bag is meant for you. I will go first. I pull out a bag. I pull out a oh my. cat. Treat. Cat competition, then. Oh, my fucking God. Okay. Um, this will be <laughs> interesting. Uh, so you pick out a small piece of food from the bag. Mm -hmm. Uh, roll a d8 for me, please. Okay, dokey. Give me a second. I forgot that we need to have our character sheets open. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's only D&D. &D. It's fine. Yeah. I, I don't know why I would, but... Uh, <laughs> almost... Ooh, Tobayani. All right. D8, you say? Eight. A six. Okay. Um, as you do, you toss the food out to the ground, or just analyze the piece of food. Yeah, I'd probably head? pull it out and sniff it. Uh, it it is well. Most of the uh, food in there is meat of some sorts. Um, mm. for for the cat diet. Um. The meat that you see is, um, it is in a little kind of edible rice paper pouch. It's, oh. it's quite elegant, um, elegantly packaged. Um, and, ooh, roll a, roll an arcana check for me. See if you can piece together what this cat would be. What cat is this? <laughs> what cat is this? Oh, that's a natural 20. Hey guys, welcome to this game show. Okay, Holy today, shit. first competitor, <laughs> Luto Man. He rolled a 20. He know, he know exactly what the, what cat this is. This cat, this cat right here. Yes, this is a Tracim. A Tracim is a cat that has wings and a high intelligence. Yes. So what happened? Like, so I pull out a piece of meat and then it turns into the cat, or a cat comes by and eats it. So if you toss the meat, <laughs> if you toss the meat to the ground, it Which summons I do. that kind of cat. A tressim, a little tressim, is summoned. You see this um, kind of dark calico um, cat. Uh, from seemingly nowhere, um, early Final Fantasy style summon uh, <laughs> kind of animation <laughs> just appears on the deck. Um, and as it runs over and it gobbles up the food, you just see uh, it jumps in the air and just this <laughs> as these two beautiful feathered wings appear um, from out the sides of it. <laughs> Okay, wow, not bad. Look at this, he's a flying cat. My god. <laughs> ah, it's not as good as a flying bird, of course. I, I prefer a bird if I have to choose. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Who, who is uh, Ludo with your natural 20? 
Mm -hmm. um, you can also determine the nature of all of the other pieces of food, which oh. is just as well, because you realize that for the sack of catnaps, uh, once two pieces of food have been pulled from the bag, it can't be used again until the next dawn. So oh. for this competition to work, someone will have to like pick a piece of meat but keep it in the bag to identify what kind of cat it will be for the competition to work all right i'll explain that as best as possible to my friends and then uh just toss the bag in their general direction and see who grabs it <laughs> who's grabbing the bag i'll give it a go all right be fun roll the deuce eight pardon me d8 Hey, it's meow, a one. Meow, 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 meow. All right. Oh. Um, so... Yeah, I don't know why I bothered. He rolled a six and a 20. His... It's pretty much his bag. They're not, necessar <laughs> they're not necessarily in order of, of, of badass cattery. Um, it, it, you know. Just, just put that out there. Um, I don't want to waste the meat. That's fair. Are so they... You kind is of it infinite or is it... You see endless meat in the bag. <laughs> Happy Valentine's <laughs> Day. <laughs> Stupid. Stupid. Um, but as you hold up the um, cube of meat, you see it is just just a really nice cube of meat. Um, it is up to you whether you want to toss it out of the bag to summon the cat or wait to see what Tarquin gets. Does it have a face on it? Does it run really fast and leave a trail of blood behind it? The, the meat or the cat? It was a joke. It was a joke. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. I am not good at yeah. reading jokes all the time. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope so, though. That would be cool. Uh, sure. Yeah, let's see what it is. Um, Describe for me. Um, Actually, no. Uh, roll, roll, shits and giggles, roll a d20 for me. Oh. Um, where one is scrunkly, and 20 <laughs> is gorgeous. Yeah, roll for scrunk. It's an 18. An 18? Mm-hmm. That is a fairly nice cat. Um, I mean, this is going to be full bias, and because I miss uh, the cat cells cat sitting the last couple of weeks. Um, so you toss the meat oh, no. out onto the deck of the ship and you see a gorgeous, silvery, um, quite large. Creepy. <laughs> not, not creepy. Not creepy. That would be <laughs> a, like a four. That would be like a, a not. I find Maine Coons creepy, I'm just saying. <laughs> That's okay, because it's a Norwegian forest cat, so it's not creepy. Okay, it's a Norwegian <laughs> forest cat. I just, you, I'm sorry, no. You oh, told me it was one thing or the other. I don't know which one it is. is They're kind of creepy. It, it is a large It looks like they cat. stare at you when you sleep. <laughs> it is a large house cat. It does not give the impression of um, being overly uh, starey when it comes to its <laughs> nature. Um, but it's a very elegant cat, and it kind of lands gently and uh, politely eats the meat kind of looks at the calico tresim and the calico tresim looks back at the uh, cat and just kind of they kind of they're not they're, they're definitely there's some beef there's some beef uh, <laughs> cat beef. the prettiest cat <laughs> um yeah the tresim's kind of like <laughs> fluffs its wings and this other cat's like yeah bitch i don't need wings i'm just <laughs> pretty <laughs> uh, <laughs> and kind of nuzzles up against your like beef on <laughs> Uh, you know what, guys? Actually, I, I don't think it would be very kind to friends if I were to have a bag of cats. Uh, one of you should keep it. And no offense, Key. It's kind of like when you turn like the the eyes on a creative character a <laughs> little too much. <laughs> I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> I'm not taking offense. <laughs> I am not a cat. So, <laughs> um, Targon, would you like to pull pull some yeah. pull some meat out of the bag? Yeah. <laughs> <Shut up. coughs> 
I mean, if if asked nicely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> As, it's up to you. I'm not gonna make you. I'm not gonna make you pull out a piece of me if you don't. <laughs> so what was the dice? It was a, a uh, twenty. The eight. The eight. Oh. Yes. Okay. That's a five. Oh, um, <laughs> Ludo, looking at this um, sliver of meat, um, y you, it, it's, it's not as nice as the other meat in the bag. Um, it, it's, it's good meat. It's fresh meat. Um, like still a bit bloody, but it looks like it's been a bit. Uh, chomped on, a bit mashed, a bit gnawed. It's got some bits of dirt on it. Um, yeah, it, it you you can tell from your uh, earlier nat twenty that this would be for a crag cat, um, mm. which is almost a big cat, but not. Um, <laughs> thinks it is. It's got the the feralness of one. Um, but it is fairly scrankly, not to be mistaken for scrankly. There's two different things. Um, a little bit scrappy. Yes. So I who who this who has the nicest uh, the nicest cat? Because those two cats are both pretty nice. That they you guys have summoned. Do not want cat bag. Oh well, that's I, uh, a crack cat. It's, it is. Hang on, let me find it. I don't know because I don't believe we have a uh, lines on this one. Oh, those are pretty. Oh yeah. That's some He-Man shit right there. It is. You're right. The meat is still a bit scrankly, though. <laughs> he's, a, he's a wild cat. Is is our boy Crag? <laughs> Not quite Craig. Um, <laughs> but yes. What you doing stealing boxes, cat? Right. <laughs> uh, but yes. So uh, that sounds like Bifon, the 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 sack of cat the cat sack sack of catnaps. That is right. I did get it right. Is yours, should you so wish. And you should be able to add it to your character sheet because it is a home really? item. Yeah. Yeah, I made it. I made it. Um, sometimes oh, no, I mean, as, but the crack cat was pretty cool. <laughs> All right, well, you have to explain to me how to add it later. Yeah, yeah. Or I can eat it in there for you in the break or some such. Is no problem. Appreciate. I, I shall cherish and use it well. Yay! But you'll have to wait till the next dawn to use it, because it's currently summoned your two cats. Um, you know what? Let's let's see how this cat beef is going. Um, but otherwise, for the rest of the uh, afternoon and evening, it is uh, it is yours. If there is anything you would like to do whilst on the ship, uh, you certainly may. Or you can get a long rest for your arrival in the snowy town of Minute in the morning. Uh -oh. I don't think Ludo gets up to anything. He just uh, bows politely to the Tresum and then uh, awkwardly Homer disappears away from it. <laughs> just, okay, sorry for summoning you into existence. Uh, <laughs> goodbye forever. <laughs> you, you see it's about to get like sad at your leaving and then it sees the other cat again that Bifon summoned. And they just both start like lowering their heads slightly. No noise is coming out yet, but they both they're both sizing each other up. <laughs> for sure. Hey you got you guys, I think your cats are about to fight, yeah. They'll be alright. I'll take okay. my cat up to the deck and uh get some ah. rest. <laughs> like they're about to start. <laughs> you swiftly take your cat and just <laughs> hold it under an arm <laughs> and uh, take it to your to your hammock. Um, 
Oh, as anymore. far as the gold, oh, it would be 21 each, and I guess we can tip our uh, our captain. Okie dokie. There's wow. an easier way to split it up. I'll add 21 yeah, to that's, my thing. That's fair. That's fair. You, thank you for the money. Uh, you didn't have to. I was kind of gonna bet on the cats to see which one was gonna come out worse <laughs> in the fight, but uh, you did. I think you did the right thing separating them, yeah? You don't, you don't want the cats to fight, it can get quite aggressive. Wouldn't want them to fight. But do... Where are you from? <laughs> oh, they, 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 yeah, that's a really good question. It is. Who, who is this speaking right now? Captain Bobinus. Of course, Yegman. there he is. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm from I'm from there. Oh, uh, guy Roush, guy Roush, other side of the uh, <laughs> world. Oh, just be sure your quartermaster gets that other piece of gold, if you don't mind. Quartermaster? What do you What do you mean? The lady that was around here sweeping up. Oh, hey Lauren, what? Yeah, what did you want me to do? I already, I already forgot, yeah. <laughs> Make sure she gets her piece of gold. So you want me to roll an animal handling check? Yes, please. Lauren! <laughs> what? <laughs> I got a gold coin for you, yeah? Bullshit, you two. You said that last time. Okay, no, but like for real seas this time, yeah? Did I get a rat handling check? <laughs> <laughs> a rat handling check? <laughs> it is for your kid. <laughs> it is for Mew Mew. Well, mine is for the captain. Oh. <laughs> what did you get? <laughs> <laughs> well, for your animal, animal handling check, I got 18. Nice. Um, are, are you genuinely doing it to Barbanos? No, or? no. I'm just gonna walk away from them. Fair. Um, <laughs> yeah, the cat, the cat just kind of goes real uh, rag dolly in your arms. Oh. Just, it just gives in. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's, it's not like settling and curling up. It's literally just like got his little arms out and is stretching like his belly, stretching like an accordion, just real long. <laughs> gonna lay down and play with it on deck until I conk out and then it can crawl up beside me if it likes. It does. It, it, it seems it seems fond. It seems fond. Uh, plays plays uh, chasing various ribbons and pieces of fabric you can find about the ship. Pretty much hell, what I was gonna do. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> what would the rest of you like to do on the ship, eh? I'd like to get the long rest because those seagulls were very hard to beat, so... Oh yeah, I'm a little beat up too. They were, they were pretty, pretty hardcore, hardcore geese. Alright. So on that note, yeah, we're all uh, gonna get... Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> hang on. <laughs> Hold it! Uh, uh uh-huh. Uh, hey, hey, yeah. hey. We're all gonna yes. get a long rest. Hey! Hey! Wait, hey. Long rest. Long. <laughs> Music is betraying me. No, I don't want the launcher extension. I just want the song. It's like five seconds long, my guy. Come on, man. Long rest. Yeah. Ah. Oh, I broke. Okay. Well, we tried. We um, got the we got the first couple of notes. <laughs> bing, 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 bing. Okay. Nice. Thanks. Computer, you did it. I'm proud of you. Okay. Oh damn! I was gonna send you something too, but I don't want to blow your computer up. It's <laughs> You can, you can certainly try. <laughs> no, I'm not ready for this song. No, 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 no. Don't, mm -mm. no, don't do it. Okay. 
I totally remember the order of all of this. Okay. So, as you wake up in the morning, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna finish that sentence. <sighs> it's really hard not to. As, as you wake, as the music also wakes. Jesus, it's struggling today. Uh, my apologies. Hopefully you, you guys can hear the music all fine and okay. And yeah. just for me. Okay, go. Let me close that. Go on. In the field, the field. Oh, I was lucky. I <laughs> just started singing it where it played again. All right. As you awake in the early morning. I'm gonna turn the music down because I can't hear it. What are you gonna say as we rise? No, I was gonna say you wake up, uh, as you wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. Ah. Yeah. That old chestnut. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure Kesha loves being referred to as that old chestnut. <laughs> <laughs> as you awake, the early morning. Thank you, Dave. You've been accustomed to the brisk, thinner airs of Ash Sky for the week or so you've been there. Though now you are banking closer to the ground, indeed seeing a ground below as opposed to the waters of the ocean, as you have for the last few days, that coldness and brisk air still sticks to your lungs on the approach to this small mountainside town. JC, I don't know if you've got the if you've got the background ready, but oh, I will, I will, I will. Got to check. You've got time. I'm still in. Okay, in I will so prepare. I, I totally forgot to remind you. That's my bad. <laughs> Magic. Don't worry, Barbanus is covering everything right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just everybody, behold Barbanus. Um, <laughs> and if anyone says Barb anus, you're fired. Um, I must say it. <laughs> I actually thought about it before you said it. <laughs> That's I, I can't I can't arrest you for the, for the thought. The, the, the thought is valid. All right, but ready whenever. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll do it. I'll 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 go. Okay, now and then do it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> As you saw overseas, mountainous ah fucked up. Anyway, that was meant to be before. Anyway, it's fine. Mountainous ranges begin to appear along the horizon. Rich purples, greys, snow-topped and varied. Towns and cities lay dotted around basking in what sunlight they can get as the sun moves overhead, shifting the cold shadows above them. As you wait on deck for the inevitable landing, your breath begins to become visible the chill washing over you. The snow and atmosphere thickens as a frozen mist bites at you for only a moment until the ship begins to descend. From here, you can see most of Lorenz, the mountainous regions and the vast, warmer plains and coastline of Ospra far below. The eponymous city itself most notable at the tip of the landmass sprawling southward. Your eyes follow the snowy and rocked, rocky faces to a landing of sorts. A town balanced on the edge of this mountain. A perfect view over the city of Ospra below it. Cozy brick and wooden beamed houses and cottages light the cold snow with a warm light, emanating a sense of comfort and home. And you know that for a while this was indeed Aloro's home. Hmm. Though you are no longer on the floating isles, this is about as close as you can get while remaining firmly attached to Terra Firma. So. Now. Ah. <laughs> Adidi. 
Yeah! New background! So we're still fairly high up, but you see the region of Osprea be far below. Um, but you see as the airship begins to um, descend towards this small ledge on these mountains. As you do, you see these tiny huts, all the snow-tipped houses and smoky chimneys, um, and you see you're landing on this higher ledge to the side, uh, where a strange kind of group of cylindrical buildings lay, um, with a large, wide-open space in front of it, all covered in snow. And you see, as you approach, this single tiny figure, increasingly buffeted by the wind and the pressure from the airship, and the snow that it's picking up, just... <laughs> <laughs> and the fi as you approach, this figure can only be... Like, they're not tall, by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but you see them all bundled up and wrapped up in a coat. Uh, and as you approach, you do partly regret not having brought slightly warmer uh, warmer garments with you. But, within a few moments of the airship, the huge uh, magical fires swapping directions to lower you down safely. You land. And welcome to Ninut, friends. Whee! New place! Beautiful cold Dinut. <laughs> Beautiful cold winter vibes. It's spring. Now we're going back to winter. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. And <laughs> it cool us down a bit. Um, so as you land, you see a gangplank um, be taken out uh, by Lauren and the whole crew of the uh, Featherboon ship kind of begin to unpack and uh, kind of get anchored down a bit. You don't see any particular other airships here um, compared to the hustle and bustle that you saw in Ash Sky. This feels quite quiet in comparison. Uh, quite quaint. Uh, and you see um, as you uh, stand on the deck, this small figure kind of move out the way of the gangplank. Um, all bundled up in this huge kind of deep blue and white um, padded furry jacket <laughs> um, which reaches their lower uh, calf by the looks of it and they kind of like a huge inflatable toddler like on go on a <laughs> snowboarding mountain <laughs> just completely wrapped up you see them kind of poddle up the gangplank one foot at a time Hello, travelers! Oh my goodness, it's so good to meet you! Oh, it's, uh, it's a cold one, hey? Hello, who who are you? Oh, uh, I'm... Hey, oh, you totally can't hear me. And you see, uh, they, they undo their hood a little bit. So you can see more than just, like, the bridge of their nose. Uh, and they undo their coat a bit. And you see a goblin child, uh, a, sm a small goblin, um, mm. with kind of very s scruffy hair, uh, some form of uniform um, that sh you can tell she's really tried her best to maintain the quality of, uh, failing somewhat. <laughs> um, just kind of a huge jangle of keys and all sorts of uh, bits and bobs on her belt and person. And, um, she's got them all on a lanyard as well. Like, she's obviously doing everything she can to stay organized. Um, oh, my bad. Um, hey, I'm Pithy. It's super good to meet you. Um, yeah, I help out uh, the mistresses and master. Uh, here at the Guild Halls of Nanute, which I'm sure you've heard of. 
right? I hope, because yeah, that would be weird. Pivy. Pithy. P-I-T-H-Y. Like the bit on the side of an orange. Pithy. Okay. Pithy. Uh, yeah. I am Luto. This is uh, Bifon. And of course you know of the legendary... I'm going to make a roll real quick. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since we've done this. <laughs> Just going to... Your Harquin, right? Oh. Of course. Yes. There's the big one, the fluffy one, and the gray one. That That's says. what Mistress said, anyway. Awesome! Well, it's so good to meet you. I am a helping hand of the... Uh, Guild Halls of Ninut, which she gestures to behind her, which are the strange kind of um, almost like tiled mosaic-ish um, cylindrical buildings behind her. Uh, yeah, I help out and it is my responsibility to help out and I have been asked by none other than the Lady Eterian and the Lady Ifta Imbold. <laughs> right? To, um, aren't they just the coolest ever? <laughs> she kind of eagerly smiles, looking in all your eyes to see if you're as excited as she is about them. Uh, Ludo is excited that they're excited. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. They're the, oh, they're the bee's knees. Uh, yeah. So I help them out with, uh, assistant stuff and chores and it's a lot of responsibility you know uh but yeah i'm gonna give you a tour get you all set up and uh give you a super cool tour and stuff they'll be arriving in like a day or so from now so in the meantime i'm i'm gonna make sure that you guys have like the most awesome amazing spectacular time my friend perido was going to be here but she totally bailed so if we see her you know you can you can use your magic to blast her for me or something you know like taking out the competition oh no 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 she's she's actually a student at the guild hall um i'm i'm er trying to earn my scholarship Oh, so you didn't mean that literally, of course. No, no, no! It's just because she's kind of flaky, you know? Um, she gets really nervous around strangers and stuff, so I don't know where she is. She's probably fine, but um, yeah, I, I was kind of expecting it, honestly. But that's okay, you know? That's a friend we can make later, but you guys are going to make so much many friends. All right. I have... Uh, I have caught down that there's going to be another one of you. I've got the big one, the gray one, the fluffy one, uh, the gal with the big guy, uh, the curly-haired one. I'm going to have one that smells like cats. Oh. Uh, they cannot be with us anymore. They had to leave. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. Yeah, it's um, okay. They're off saving the world with a cat or something. Hey, that's pretty cool. That's the dream, right? Like, have a cat and be a hero. Okay. <laughs> living, living life. I prefer bird. Ah. She, she sees friends. Do you, do you need me to... That... Is that bird following you? Should you yes. need to do something about it? Oh no, hopefully it follows me for life. Okay, I think, you know, I think... I think this is good company. I think we're gonna have a rockin' day. Awesome. Um... So, yeah. First off, I know... Um, and she begins heading... Just not even like, let's go this way. She just begins heading towards the guild halls. <laughs> Uh, do you all follow? <laughs> Just kind of... I guess so. <laughs> She's yeah. beginning the tour. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so this is the guild halls. Um, I know you were promised some, like, really cool kit and stuff, but, like, half of it still hasn't arrived yet, which is such a nuisance. Um, I do need to check in with a few people about that, you know. <laughs> you just can't get the work sometimes, you know. So, I mean, I am the only helping hand here, so, um, there is a lot of juggling to do. But that's fine. Uh, there is... I'm sure there's some stuff we can give you. Um... And she opens the doors uh, to the guild hall, kind of these two large, uh, beautiful oaken doors uh, with this kind of glistening grayish uh, blue-green handle embedded with little gold flakes, um, which she pushes open for you all to enter, uh, stomp the snow off of your shoes. <laughs> Okay, so our first port of call uh is uh is Miss Suyu here? Miss Suyu Miss Suyu She's she's like one of the receptionists here and helps out with the guild stuff, but like I don't know where she is right now. Miss Suyu And you see this fire genasi kind of pop up slowly from behind the desk. Ah, Pithy. Hello. My, you were excited for today and I thought I almost missed you. I know, right? That would have been such a shame. Um, can you, um, make a note about these guys' gifts not being ready yet? I can have a look into it for you. <laughs> and you see she kind of pushes back her fiery literal fire hair and just tries to keep her cool and <laughs> kind of pushes her eyebrow up and carries on working at her desk and thank you so much okay that's fine um so if we if you guys come through here into this little office space she opens the door for you all again and uh, you see this kind of big cardboard box on the table Right, so, do you want to start with the cool stuff, or the still cool, but, like, not quite as cool stuff? Where do you think we should start? Oh. I prepared for a lot of things, but I wasn't prepared for that question. Oh. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd start with the... the less cool stuff, and then you can work up to the really big stuff. Work up, work our way... By all means, let's go that way. Okay, so, um, unfortunately, we have run out of cloaks of, uh, useful things. Have you seen those? They're super cool. They're, like, um, they're cloaks, and they have patches, and you can rip a patch off and suddenly get, like, a really handy item on it. Um, but we are out. So, we have got a robe of items, which is, uh, just, you know, just a slightly leveled down version of it. But there you go. That's, uh, for you guys. And she stuffs this patched, um, cloak, uh, in whoever's closest arms. Probably Beefong, because you made contact, you, you tried to talk to her. Um, <laughs> And you do see this kind of grey cloak. Uh, and you see all these patches of uh, seemingly half useful things. Uh, so you see... Um, I do need to create an item for this, but I will post um, the description in the Discord. Uh, the robe of items has patches for the following things. Uh... A cardboard box that is shoebox sized. Oh. A wickless ah. candle. <laughs> in case you need a candle without a wick in it. Um, a three foot tall step ladder. <laughs> uh, a t uh, what seems to be, from the patch alone, a piano. And uh, a clockwork piano. horse backflip toy. And last, but by no means least, a one by one foot uh, doggy door that you can magically attach to a wall. <laughs> oh, I nice. Actually becoming a cat lady. This 
Uh, so that is what is on the cloak of items. Uh, <laughs> um, and she's like, okay, let me see what the next coolest thing is. Um, oh, there's Ready, only... <laughs> exactly. Uh, the second thing is uh, one of these bad boys. It's pretty cool. And you see she takes out a fairly large vial. Um, Roll a just... 17. <gasps> Yay! You make a beautiful, a beautiful little bed box for friends. Um, nice. Complete with a uh, faux candle to give the illusion of EPCP oh, I'm keeping times. the candle. Oh, you're keeping the candle? <laughs> All right. Yeah. My, my apologies. Oh. <laughs> Um, I don't know what to do with the shoe box. I was hoping it was a bigger cardboard box. I need to practice my stealth. Yeah, it's 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 quite small. <laughs> um, but if if you get hand if you get hold of a robe of useful items, that might actually come with a, a better box for you. Who says these aren't useful? <laughs> <laughs> this is my homebrewed shit version of the robe of useful items because I thought what would be funnier than. A robe of items that is slightly less useful than the robe of useful items. <laughs> it's the robe of half useful items. <laughs> I will not have you criticizing my new outfit. <laughs> I will not. I would do no such thing. You better um, add that when you add the bag of cats. <laughs> and they are one use only patches. And once the patches are gone, it uh, becomes a cloak of regularness. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> The Cloak of mid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cloak of all right. Um, thanks, I guess. Uh, the second thing she pulls out is what seems to be, at a first glance, a uh, just a vial that has been completely coated blackish grey on the inside. But you all may make an arcana check to see if you know what it is. I, I would open it to show you guys what it is, but that would be pretty disastrous, honestly. Because mm, then I would have wasted it, you know? Oof. Oh. Natural one. It, 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 it is a vial. Um, that is coated. You think there's something in there, but it's just too smoky to see what's in there. I only got an eight. Again, it's <coughs> it's super smoky in there. You can't see what the item might be. It's Eighteen. In the vial. Um, Tarquin, 18. you see that this is a bottle, a vial of everlasting smoke. <laughs> so it is oh, not nice. so much that there is an item in there that is shrouded by smoke. The item is the smoke itself. Um, ever smoking bottle. Um, so it is up to you who has that and who adds it to their inventory. Um, but it produces a butt ton of smoke um, in like a 60 foot area, I believe. A very thick smoke. So you can do shenanigans or escape or hide or anything else the heart desires. Um, and she goes, and the piece de resistance is this. And she holds up just a small silvery ring uh you all may roll a religion check <laughs> to see if you can thank you for not making me reach out and grab the vial and drink it with my <laughs> natural one i wonder what that would do um just you just drink it i'd immediately just start talking like this <laughs> <laughs> all the time <laughs> <laughs> for and the rest of the speak, campaign yeah then we do speak with animals on friends and they're just talking to each other like that the whole time <laughs> it's all right man we sometimes we both do we just speak like this you know <laughs> yes what do we get for the religion chicks 13 non-religion 16 13 16? yeah i would say uh, Tarquin, what did, what did you get? 13. 13. I've not got my list up. There we go. No, that's the wrong list. Okay, well, <laughs> we tried. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, you would you would all see the uh, silvery pattern of the ring. It's kind of like these overlapping um, layers of kind of silver or a silvery looking material. Um, and it gives it this effect of like droplets of la like layered droplets in this silver metal. Um, when it comes to uh, any form of tear looking um, sim symbology, uh, you know that to be associated with the uh, goddess, renowned actual goddess, um, so no worries there, of Faelfor. Uh, Faelfor being the goddess of sorrow, um, and most notably having temples that where all the priests are just crying dudes. Um, but it is it is a kind of cathartic uh, belief. It is a cathartic religion. Um, the crying cleanses the soul and is re rejuvenating. Uh, but for non-believers, it, it can look a bit funny seeing one of the temples and just loads of dudes and just yeah just. <laughs> Do they ever stop? Uh, no, nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody knows <laughs> I really appreciate that cleansing if you're still crying <laughs> <laughs> didn't say it was effective um, but depending on who would like the ring it is officially again homebrewed I'm prepared and made it a homebrew item that you can nice. equip and the cool thing about the, the cool thing about the uh, band of file for is that uh, <laughs> twice per day you can cast the spell Speak with the Dead, which gives you, for 10 minutes, the ability to speak to uh, a dead humanoid, so long as you're not, like, an enemy. And uh, you get a... I think it's up to three questions you may ask them, uh, unless Neat. it's been previously cast in the last 10 days. But what what is extra cool and homebrewy about this shit is that if you run out of the two charges before your next long rest, but you kill a humanoid, it resets one of the charges to a maximum of twice per day. So if you use it twice, kill two fuckers, and then you, you would then be able to use it another two times that same day. Fun facts. So it, so it has human souls of it. No, it doesn't have human souls in it. It's it was made from human souls. Regener it, it regenerates with the power mm -hmm. of human souls. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's this go make some. <laughs> it's self-sufficient, but if you happen to have some human souls laying around, you can use it a little bit more than you would have before. Okay, oh, don't give it to Tarquin. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> the interaction is going to be who wakes me up what do you mean who it's me and then it's going to be 10 minutes of that into, it turns into reverse speak with the dead it's like who yeah. were you in life it's like I was Kyle do you know who I am I'm, it's going to be 10 minutes of I'm that until the, the effect wears off <laughs> <laughs> so that. he only gets to ask two questions <laughs> it's do you know me and the third is are you sure you don't know me <laughs> are you quite positive <laughs> you don't know me <laughs> but yes that I mean item... since I'm being the cat lady today Ludo if you don't want it I'm the one who's dealt with the dead I think uh, it's uh, I think it's on you Ludo doesn't want to talk to the dead really oh. I'll take it yeah Well, uh, that's it for now, but there'll probably be more stuff once uh, the mistresses arrive, so enjoy. I hope I hope you like those. The Ring of File 4 was kind of like a little bit tricky to get, but I was like, no, these guys deserve it. They're cool. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, which department do you want to see first? What are the options? Well, this is the Guild Hall of Ninute, <laughs> so clearly uh, 
No, sorry. That was very condescending and mean. I apologize. Uh, there are three <laughs> key different departments to the guild halls of Ninut. Of course, Mistress Atirin, uh rules over the uh, the guild of Arcana. Uh, Mistress Icta Imbolt rules over the uh, guild of Hunting. And Master uh, Hounslow Krola uh, rules over the uh, department of smithing, which uh, I don't believe you have met him yet because he was not at the festivals. We know Ecta well enough. We should probably go check on her first. Cool. Uh, this way, please. And you see that um, from kind of the reception area, there's kind of a couple of social areas. Um, where you see some of the varying students and adults kind of giving you interested looks and going back to their conversations. And you see a fork in the cylindrical buildings. You see one to the left that goes off to the arcane department. You see one straight ahead that goes off to the hunting department. And you'll never guess where the one to the right goes. Goes to the smithing department. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you go straight ahead into the hunting department. So, uh, I think if I was anywhere, this is where I'd probably get my scholarship for. Um, but this is the hunting guild. So, within all of the different guilds, and she's walking you through these corridors and, like, vast training areas where some people are doing archery practice, some people are doing martial practice. There's a classroom where, um, there's a kid doing, like, a PowerPoint presentation on a basilisk. Uh, the difference between a basilisk and a wolgernon. <laughs> like, there's another, another classroom... Uh, where they're doing a test on different plants and which ones make the best, like, stamina spells and everything. Uh, so we have a few different kinds of people here. We have the students who are uh, kind of having their school experience here, having a, uh, focusing on one or two of the different areas. Uh, we then have uh, the... We then have... The I've lost it in my oh. brain. <laughs> we, then, we then have the all right, Scott. <laughs> and there it is. We then have the trainees who are not necessarily students, but are looking to kind of uh, really begin a career in uh, in their chosen field if they have not done the full schooling here. So, you know, there's like short co courses, evening courses, but also longer courses, mentorships, all that kind of stuff. But then you've got the real good shit. You've got the master workers and the aides. And they're the people that are like hand selected by each of the masters uh, who shadow them and help out. Basically like they're sous chefs, you know, like they do all the secondary business and then they learn all the ways so that, you know, it won't happen. But should any of the masters pass on or have to go, they can cover for them and take their place. Me. And that's the dream. I don't know what department, but I just want to be one of them, you know. This place really seems to mean a lot to you. Uh, why is that? Oh, wow. Uh. You guys are coming in hot with all these questions today. Um, so, well, this is my home, and I want to help out the guild hall as much as I can. Like, I want to wanna be a hero, you know? And hmm. if I can get really good, uh, I, I'd probably have to learn magic, but... Mistress Atarian said I should probably never cast a spell again. That would probably be a really bad idea. Um, and she's right. Like, she, that sounds harsh to to, the, to anyone without context. But, like, no. People were on fire the last time I tried to cast Prestidigitation. So it's probably for the best. Um, uh, but, yeah. Like, I want to be skilled. I want to be, like, a master of something, you know? Like, master of craft. Okay. Help out people. But I'm just pithy, so, like, I've just got to learn 
learn my way up from the bottom, you know? I but think you can do it, Pithy. I think you're going to be great. You you're going to cast magic and not set people on fire. I mean, oh, I do, do you want to know a secret? I'm a cook, right? Look look at me. I have this giant pot. I have all these cooking utensils. I started a fire trying to boil water. No way. Uh-huh. No, Shh, no. Don't tell anybody. You're lying. Heroes can make mistakes too. It's okay. Sometimes they even eat poison. Yeah. <laughs> Why... Why? <laughs> she just wants yeah, to hear it happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> why, would, why would a hero eat poison? Oh, you mean like like uh, they know that one of the goblets is poisoned and so to save the king, they are like, no, master, I will drink. And then they drink it and they're like, well, we're dead. Yes, exactly that. Okay, because all right. the reasons. I was going to say that would be crazy. Otherwise, why would you just poison your hizzle? Don't know who would ever do that. <laughs> That's really dumb. <laughs> you guys are fun. All right, come on, kids. Let's carry on the tour. So, a lot of the... Uh, <laughs> he just <laughs> brushes over it and just carries on. Um, and you see she's kind of weaving her ways between the departments um, where there are some overlaps between like the training halls and there are large rooms uh for practice jewels and everything that she's showing you so uh most of the people who graduate from the from the hunting guild are become ven venerators which you probably met on ash sky for the festivals which are like monster and varmint hunters which are pretty cool i i think it would be cool to be a venerator but i don't know i don't know monsters you know Already uh, bumped into a couple of those. Um, anyway, so, and she just quickly points to this other social area. <laughs> um, this kind of circular space. So, this is one of our really nice uh, social areas. And uh, there's uh, some hot chocolate machines here. Do you guys have hot chocolate? Where you're from? Indeed. Yeah. Uh, oh, you guys are well traveled. I, I should have expected that. But if you want any, we have our experimental hot chocolate machines here. Um, experimental. Created by this guy. Well, because the, you know the usual process, right? Is you're at a kitchen and you have a stove and like you heat up a pan and then you heat up the chocolate and then you dispense it and you've got like as much as the pan allowed well this uh -huh. is it's in a tap system right so you and you see it's like this golden almost like popcorn like uh 20s popcorn dispenser shape contraption and you you lift up this tap and you can just pour boiling but not too hot obviously Hot, hot cocoa into a cup. Beefon measures from a distance to see if he can fit his head under there. <laughs> you, you certainly could. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> we lost um, him. <laughs> that's it, that's it. And uh, this button up here dispenses marshmallows at a perfectly numerical rate that is um, only ever very rarely wrong if you get an extra marshmallow that's good fortune man my my friend my friend had that happen and her uncle died oh dang i'm sorry what oh no 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 like he he was he was gross but um he left a lot for her in his inheritance so like she's mega rich now and it's because she got an extra marshmallow from the can I uh, try the marshmallow thing? <laughs> you can. You can just press the marshmallow. You gotta cup your hands underneath. Do you want me to push the button, or do you want to push the button? Did, did Hello, you my push hands the button? Are... Uh, yeah, sure. Um, oh, man, I'm kind of small. 
give up. What I'll I'll, give I'll push lift? the button because then like. It's okay. my luck, right? I don't know if me catching it is my luck or me pushing the that's, button. That's that's true. Luck. That's true. I think it's the button for me. It's... So I'll I'll put my hands underneath. Okay. Okay, push it. Yeah. Roll for me a D one hundred, please. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> I will meant to, I will also roll a D one hundred, if you are within five. I did not mean for that to happen, but we'll roll with it. Uh, the music's just doing its own thing. Okay. I rolled my dice. What did you get? I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. A D100? It keeps rolling 100. <laughs> uh, is there one here? There's the 100 here. Twenty. Twenty. Yeah. You get the usual amount of marshmallows. Yeah. No course. more, but no less. Mm -hmm. Yo, that's not a bad thing though. Mm. It's worth a try. You know why? Because you get marshmallows. So. That is true. Yeah. It's free. Not good. At least while you're with me. <laughs> uh, otherwise, it's like a couple of bronze, but, you know. Um, so, I'm going to leave you in this area. So, if you have any questions, uh, I'm going to go see if uh, Master Hounslow Crowler needs anything. Because I think I have to do a delivery. So, um, yeah, stay in here. Um, ignore those big metal doors. Please do not open them. Do not try to open them. Those over there? Yep. You see two big, like, slightly, like, they're double doors, so together they're kind of in the shape of, like, a giant bullet. Um, and they're kind of engraved slightly, and they come out of the wall, um, and have two large pull handles in the center. Yeah, please don't open those. And it's not, it's not like a test of, like, oh, you open the door. Like, no, don't open the doors, okay? Hmm. But why? Because there's bad stuff in there. Oh, okay. Ludo sits on his hands and looks at the help doors. Your, help yourself to Coco. I'll be back in like five minutes, okay? Uh, one thing before you go? Yeah, what's up? Would unionizing in a guild be redundant? Um, there are contracts in place to make sure we are paid fair amounts and have fair breaks and all of that kind of thing. So it's like a very informal union, but it, there there are protections in place, yeah. Okay, well, you're doing a great job. Thank you so much. Oh, no, I opt into overtime, but it is paid really well. Mm. To a point, because I do work a lot of overtime, and they were like, respectfully, we, you're working too much. We have told you to go home after this point, so anything you work after that, don't tell From the anyone. looks of things, it seems like you're the only one working. <laughs> uh. I, don't, I don't like to... Uh, anyway, yes, I will be, I'll be right back. Take care. I'm gonna and go get that, some... She... Just... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You just get a, a good mouthful of, of hot cocoa, and it's really good. Like, it's... Oh, it, it, whatever you had in Tuldren ain't got shit on this. <laughs> oh. <It's, laughs> don't know if it's the climate, if it's the way it's made, if it's the machine, <laughs> if it's the extra marshmallows. This is good. And that is where we will take our break while we wait to see if anyone uh, does anything they shouldn't do that may or may not involve doors. <laughs> so shall we say 10 minutes? Come back at 5? Yeah, that sounds good. Mm -hmm.
Okie doke. Friends! We will be back. Hop, hop, hop. In ten minutes. <laughs> I have to stop. I'm doing that in real life and shit now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, y'all. We'll be right back. Thank you. Be right back!
we're back. Welcome back, hello. We're a little bit late because we got into a very deep discussion about the pacing for this. The touching of doors. Ooh. Mm. So, welcome back, everyone. I, I, do, I do believe we have a couple of people to say hello to. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, do hello, we? Hello again, everyone. Oh, no, my chat won't scroll that high. But if you've said hello, hello, feel free to say hello again. <laughs> pip, pip, cheerio. Pip, pip. No, that's goodbye. Cheerio's goodbye. Oh, is it? Yeah. Tally ho can go either way. Okay. I think. I'm is Tally Ho kind of like an old timey let's go? Because that's what Tally Ho is, right? Like, kind of like a. Tally Ho! I, so. I thought oh, it was like a yeah. body count in Victorian times. <laughs> oh, really? Like Tally? <laughs> like Tally the bodies? No, it was just Sort of. It's more joke. like The Witcher 1. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, collect the Pokemon cards. That was a joke, but I kind of hope that is the reason behind the, the wording of it. <laughs> huh. Uh, here it says... Your body count? It's a cry made by Huntsman to tell others the quarry has been sighted. Oh. Yeah, so it's like, let's fucking go! <laughs> it's basically that. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Tally-ho. Yeah, just pointing it out. Gotcha. Tally-ho! It's like, oh, shit. And all the hunting dogs are woof, 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 woof. Let's go! All right, let's go. Come on. <laughs> We're going to have to do that when we play Kingdom Come. Just <laughs> dog just charges a rabbit. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Smart Alec. Why are you waddling in? Is it because you're a penguin? I'm mm -hmm. here for it, yeah, so. Welcome! And welcome back, everybody. <laughs> to terrible jokes and questionable content. So, last... Where, where we left last off... Uh, the, gr <laughs> the group is in a room. A room of chill. There are sofas. There's a nice fireplace. Nice window view out into the snow and the snowy pine trees and beech trees. And just, you know, a set of mysterious bullet-shaped double silver doors. That are about, you know, six and a half foot tall. That come out of the wall slightly. Open immediately. Are you? Damn! Yes. <laughs> like to roll an insight check? On that door. Oh. Insight is more so for people, but if you would like to. No, I just like saying that. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, what should I do? Perception? Go ahead and roll. I Perception would say... check on the door? Perception check is like a visible, a visual vibe check. Investigation is more investigation. like a... Investigation would be more like a... Are there any maybe traps or me me mechanics on it that are weird? I would also allow an arcana check to see if there's mm. any spells on it. Spells. How about we just <laughs> do, the, do it the LucasArts way and just beef on look at door? Yeah, roll for beef on look at door, which would be perception. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, I'll perception first. <laughs> as, a, as a three. I have a nine. Uh, you may get advantage uh, if the others wish to help you. Okay, yes, I will also... Look at door. Be Ludo will oh, see beef on looking at door and will also look at door. Okay, be fun. Roll with it. Tarquin will see Ludo looking at be fun and looking at door, and <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna train help here. The second roll <laughs> is a ten. Okay, so Tarquin... I squinted. <laughs> Tarquin, roll for a perception check for me, please. <laughs> Eighteen. Twenty-one. Oh, okay. Sorry. Twenty-one. Oh. Oh. No, it's fine. Either is good. Um, I think we need different music. I don't know if I have the music. Dark, ominous door music? Yeah, I forgot the dark, ominous door music. This might do. No, this will do. This is, this is, yeah, this is ominous Christmassy vibes. Um, 
Just picturing this thing sitting in the blackness like a Resident Evil door. <laughs> <laughs> you see these double doors, and they are definitely an odd shape and odd silvery patterns. You get, with the way that the handles are set up as pull doors, but the fact that the doors also come outwards towards you, you get a feeling that they are keeping something in. You get the impression that there is definitely some protection of whatever is inside. Um, with a 21, you would be able to tell that there is a simple mechanism on the outside that can be used to um, disarm, so to speak, the protection so that the doors can be opened, uh, etched into this pattern around the edge of the right-hand door. So Tarakum could see that there's something on this door, or should I do an arcana check? Tarakum can see that there's a mechanism on the door. Okay. That would seemingly um, do the Do trick. an arcana check to see if there's anything more on the door. Go for it. Twelve. With a twelve, you get some semblance of magic. It is hard to tell the point of its emanation because you are quite, from where you are in this kind of rest room, you are quite close to the um, arcana workrooms of the guild hall. Um, mm. But you get a, if you get a sense that if there is magic. Uh, emanating, it's not around the doors. Okay. I would like to do another perception check to listen at the door. Mm. You do not need to do a perception check. Um, you do not hear anything from within. Mm. Uh, one one second, before. Mm -hmm. And I'll kind of gesture for Bifon to move back a bit. Oh my god. <laughs> I knock, knock, knock. Okay. Uh, how strongly are you knocking? Just a little tepid, uh, just trying to, you know, trying to see if, see if the boss is home. There's no reply. Bang, bang, bang! <laughs> and then I run back giggling behind Beef on. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. All three of you roll a perception check for me, please. Uh-oh. It's better than a charisma saving throw. A good person <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, nat 20. Oh, we're coming in hot with the nat 20s today, Ludo. A little bit, a little bit. With a natural 20, you don't hear anything for a good few seconds as you run back behind your friends. And as you're all kind of eagerly like waiting to see if you can hear anything, you hear... Very faintly, a chain just not being pulled, not being tugged, not moving significantly, but the kind of feeling of when someone has been kind of holding themselves up and then let their body fall. Hmm. 
Hmm. Roll an insight check for me, please. With your not 20? Roll an insight check. Okay. Like it was it was please. bound to happen. It was that was due. That's a seven <laughs> off on that one. Where anybody has been chained up in falls, they probably need help. Hey, this is this is the headquarter of the good guys, right? If they're in, uh, they're the good guys, right? The ones who want us to go around assassinating people. Yeah, I'm sure they're the good guys. Yeah. And then what? They just have somebody chain up in their own house, and we're supposed to believe that the uh, that the person in there is a bad guy. They want us to kill everyone, and they believe they want us to believe that the person in there is a bad one. Mm. Sounds to me like there's something they definitely want hidden. Well, look, we're not gonna find out by asking them if they're good or bad. We have to find out if what they have back there really is bad or maybe it's really a good and then they're trying to trick us to make us the bad one. Run that by me again? Okay, so <laughs> if they're bad, we ask them if they're uh -huh. good. They're going to say they're mm -hmm. good. Mm. But if we see what they keep in the jail... And if the one in the jail is a good, then they are the bad. He like leans How back like up? boom. Like he just dropped a mind bomb on you. <laughs> <Get ripped. laughs> I don't know. Honestly, most people that are in chains are usually the bad ones. But uh, this could be an exception. Yeah, if... A bad guy has somebody in chains. That means they're a good one, usually. Mm. So, if we open the door, and if maybe if the person in there is a good guy, then we know that the Ethereum is actually a bad guy. DM. Yeah. Are the ladies with us currently? No, they uh, stay behind to help uh, move some other stuff off of the ship. <laughs> no moral compass to guide us back to sanity. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping they, I was hoping somebody I mean, had some magic or something. They are just outside. You can run and grab them. It wouldn't take you know two three minutes. Well, I don't know what they have. I wanted to inquire if they had any magic that could help us uh, figure out what's back there. Well, you know, Luke is a cleric. And uh, Umbrella is a bard, both of which are inherently magical classes. Do any of them sense what's back there? Because I can only detect magic, and that's pretty much it. Not to your, not to your immediate knowledge. Um, mm. Umbrella just leveled up, so she might have swapped out her spells. <laughs> I don't know what to do the equivalent. Uh, Umberlai has been uh, studying her spells and, and sw swapping around her chosen uh, magics. <laughs> That's probably the canon way of describing it rather than leveled up. <laughs> and uh, I believe clerics can uh, change their spells around every now and then. So there's no guarantee. I'd like to cast Disguise Self. Okay. Who would you like to disguise yourself as? Ecta. Okay. Oh. Um, how does this spell manifest? How does be formed? Snap my fingers and it kind of starts from the top and works its way down like I'm Cinderella. It's... And how does Tarquin feel seeing Ikta suddenly? <laughs> um, I don't know. Depending on on what she kind of Gives out, you know, the kind of vibe that she poses. Okay, be but fun. So do you feel like she's... you want to shoot arrows at Tarquin from afar? <laughs> what? 
No. Oh, okay. Well, I think you're thinking of the wrong person. <laughs> Ikta is not the... You're thinking of Yanka. Oh, okay, yes, you're, you're right. Of... That's yeah. exactly true. <laughs> Ikta, Ikta, who I believe we have a, a panel for. Bing! A... Yanka doesn't get one. But I one. made sure to look extra hot. Nice. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, Ikta is fine. Yanka wow. is a different story. <laughs> I wouldn't do that <laughs> to you. That's what I thought you did. I was like, oh, dang. All right. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's a tactic. If they know who she is. Okay. All right. So what's this little latch over here? How does this thing work? Well, um, <laughs> here we go. Tarquin, you see the... As the seer of the mechanism, you know it's just a simple... Press in and slide. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day number three. Hey. Um, <laughs> yes, you can push in because uh, there's like these little vine patterns just around the outside and you can press in one of the leaves and kind of slide it over to the side. And that should unlock the mechanism. It's very well here. Yeah. Right. So I gently depress the button and do my best uh, Hicta impression and slowly walk in to see what's there. You see... I think we need some more music for this. You see an uncharacteristically dark corridor. Even compared to the bits of the arcane department you've seen that are a lot more um, kind of decorated like a night sky. These are plain bare walls. Kind of a dark slightly sheen reflective uh, stonework. And a slightly damp floor. It's a slight corridor which curves off to the left, seemingly into a larger chamber. At this point, you all hear the slight jangle of chain. What's our walking order as we go in? Well, I'm walking ahead. Okay. Um, if they'd like to stick to the shadows or something so it doesn't see them, whatever might be back here. That's what I would suggest. Uh, Ludo will be close behind and he'll cast light on his hat. Thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> um... And Targwin has dark vision, so no nice. problem. Nice. Okay. You all make your way through this very narrow corridor. Another very obscure song for you today. <laughs> um, and as you approach the end of the corridor and the beginning of the chamber, if you all scooby-doo peek your way around the side, you see this kind of large metal frame. It's ch not even just chained into the floor, but has been built into the floor. There is cement that has been poured into the floor that connects this contraption. This large frame... Uh, has uh, a slight lean backwards to it with similarly strongly attached chains coming down from the ceiling. The chains leading to shackles which lead to dark grey slightly bloodied hands delicate hands 
the body in this contraption leaning slightly forward between being held by the back frame and these front chains. Around their waist is this kind of metallic belt that is chaining them again to the ground, to the contraption, to the ceiling a couple more times. And you see someone in very plain, dark clothing. Pure white hair. Everybody roll. Mm, I'd say perception check, if you wish. Perception, medicine. Yeah. Perception, medicine, or arcana. Let's say. Hmm. 22 perception. Mm-hmm. 22 perception. You see that their, the side of their hair seems as if it was once undercut and shaved but has since grown out a fair bit. With a 22 in perception, you can tell they've been here for a few weeks. At the least. You doubt they got a hairdresser in here for them, though. Um, You can see that they seem to be drow in origin. Um, and with a feminine lean but very muscular but also somewhat withered body like someone who used to work out a significant amount and then went through like a devastating illness and just has withered away somewhat Um, their face is just hung down looking at the floor what about the rest of you uh, eight on perception, but I also rolled the medicine check for 22. Okay. Um, they are not dead. But they do not have a pulse. Ooh. They do not seem to have been recently injured by any physical attacks. Whatever has gone on with them is potentially some form of psychic damage. And with the amount of restraint, the amount of restraint seems unnecessary for the condition that they are medically in. Um, It's hard to determine if that's because it's warranted or and they've been purposely put into the state or because it's not warranted and this is a blasphemous way to keep this person. I would like to cast a spell. Okay. I'd like to cast Detect uh, Evil and Good. Okay, would you like to tell everybody in chat what that does, please? Mm. Let me double check. For the duration, which is 10 minutes, you know if there is an aberration, celestial, elemental, fey, fiend, or undead within 30 feet of you, as well as where the creature is located. Uh, Similarly, if you know there is a place or object within 30 feet of you that has been magically consecrated or desecrated. The spell can penetrate most barriers, but is blocked by blah 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 blah. Okay. Interesting. In the world of Issafray, as you know, homebrew nonsense and whatnot, it's not necessarily as easy to define between celestial, fey, fiend, undead, as a lot of those lines are very blurred, hence the new- the dawning of a new age. (laughs) Okay. However. <laughs> and this is a large, however. <laughs> mm-hmm. If the the response 
you get in your heart and your mind as you cast this would be akin to opening a Geiger counter next to two nuclear waste barrels. It is instantaneous and it is strong. Oof. Whoever this person is, whoever they were, whatever they are and were, is bad. It is tinted with necromancy. Tinted with some grotesque deity's power. All right, I'll... Uh, Ludo physically recoils as soon as he casts a spell, and he immediately cancels it because it's blinding to him. And you see him, like, wiping at his eyes. And he says, uh, guys, uh, I think maybe... I think maybe they were right. This one... I've never sensed anything as evil as this one. Tarquin. Whereabouts are you standing currently? Mm, I, not too far, but not like, not exactly close. Like uh, I can reach it, but can you see them? Yeah. Their head shoots up and looks directly at you. Eyes wide, bloodshot, blackened yellowed like they've not seen a wink of sleep in whatever hell they have come from you have it <laughs> give it to me give Are you immune to being charmed? I have advantage against being charmed. Good to know. Um... I'm gonna need you to roll that 20 there, buddy. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm going to need you to beat... I'm going to need you to beat a DC of 18. Oh, shit. What, what kind of save? A charisma saving throw. Okay. I don't have much charisma, but let's try. I choose to disagree with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think my character should need some remodeling because <laughs> <laughs> this cannot be. I should have a Tarquin's going charisma. into juggling multi-class bard next level. <laughs> okay, first, first one. Oh, oh my god. Six. Oh, Jesus. Oh, and sweet next mother of God. Come on. Is, uh, no, 12. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. So that was a 1 and a 12? Uh, add that was 6 together and 12. 18. Okay. Uh-oh. Tarquin. This person is in a lot of pain. You look through their mind as it penetrates yours. Happy Valentine's Day. And you see them towering above their enemies, falling one by one by one. Some would call it villainy. You would call it success. Heroism. You look to the artifact on your arm. 
that your master gave you back at the monastery. They need it more than you. And though you are definitely heroic, giving it to them will only benefit you. People will tell stories of you. And all you have to do is give them this armband you have. As you realize these things in your mind, Luto and Bifon, you see Tarkin take steps towards this person, unbreaking eye contact. Uh, Tarquin, you heard me say this is very evil, right? Must give. No, 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 come on, come on, come on. And Tar uh, Luto will pivot so that he's standing in front of Tarquin and start physically, but gently, firmly but gently, pushing him the opposite direction. Come on, we, we gotta go. This was a bad idea, guys. We, they're very good people here. This is a very evil person in here. Come on. Make a contested strength check. The two of you. Rollies! Strength rollies! Yeah, come on, you little baby. <laughs> come on, you little baby. Roll contested strength check. That's a nine. Okay. Oh, it's only uh, it didn't add it, but it's a 13 okay. plus 5, so 18. 18. Okay. Luto, you managed to just about stop Tarquin in his tracks. You both have a, one chance to try and help snap him out of it before he will continue getting closer by any means necessary. Come on, hero. This is not the way your story is written. Come on. Be fun. Let's go. And he uh, hefts him up in his shoulder and starts fireman running, hustling him out of the place. Mm hmm. Same okay. behind you. Tarquin, roll another Christmas save for me, please. My. Add advantage. Oh, you're going to stunning strike me, aren't you? Don't do it. <laughs> oh my god, that's a four. <laughs> Come on, man. There we go, 19. Nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh! Uh, you for a moment see that Ludo is trying desperately to pick you up and you kind of have your armband in your hand with the kind of uh, spiral shaped gem in it huh. you don't remember being like you were in this room earlier but Things have escalated very quickly, and you don't remember being conscious for much of it. At this point, we are going to roll initiative. Oh. Just to better manage the events that are going on. Very good. <laughs> uh... Okay. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> Aha! Uh, so, 17 for me. <laughs> Alright, cool. <laughs> I was a 16. Uh, and I was a 15. Aha! So, <laughs> well, wait for it. So, we've got her at 23. We've got... Uh, who was next? Was it JC? 17. Okay, 17. JC. Dark Queen! Fifteen. Fifteen. And Bifo. Sixteen. Sixteen. Oh, so nice, you guys. Um, okay. So first up in order is Chained Lady. She's gonna try and charm him again. <laughs> oh my god. Gonna try and charm him again. Uh... This is what she would do. And she is going to invoke that. Uh... Oh, 
shit. Okay. So you are going to get advantage on the charisma save again, Tarquin. But she is going to use an ability that adds a d10 to her roll. Okay. So we'll do we'll do a contested contested charisma. Let's give it a go. Okay. <laughs> There's two. That's plus twelve. Okay. Uh. Do you want the good news or the <laughs> bad news? <laughs> I want the bad news. Um. You've got to roll a nineteen or a twenty. So that's almost impossible. Yeah. There's ten percent chance. It's a ten percent chance. Uh, the downside is nope. with the with the the added stuff she got. It's it's gonna be really bad. bad. I thought that was the bad news. I thought we got the bad news already. <laughs> oh no! The good news is that it's easier maths to do. Oh you don't good. Have to worry about <laughs> maths. I mean, with those numbers, uh, I have no chance. Yeah. So you look down at the armband, kind of get out of Ludo's grasp. And then you're like, what's going on in here? And as you look up again, you see her still just wide eyed, unblinking, like a fucking hawk, just ready to strike. Just these terrifying eyes. She looks directly at you, and you are once again charmed. How? Oh, oh no. Um. So you have forty foot of movement, right? Yes. Oh shit. Okay. Um. But you are next to both Bifon and Ludo. So by moving through their space. You both get one opportunity attack to try and stop Tarquin. Has to be an attack? Has to be an attack. Just a straight attack. All right. So. What, the idea is we're trying to, like, knock him out? You gotta do something, because he's, he's going to her right now. He's using all his movement. Ah, uh, well, to unfortunately, it's just an 11 to hit. Does an 11 hit Tarquin? Eh, uh, nope. Mm. All right, here comes a bonk. Nope. The, oh, maybe. That's a 25 to hit. Oh. Yeah, I think that hits pretty well. <laughs> okay, <laughs> roll, roll for damage. 13. You can opt in for... Okay, you can opt in for lowest. Degree. Sorry. Like, no, thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> he can heal you. Don't it's worry. fine. You're a big boy. You can always use the ring to talk to me when I'm dead. Oh. Yeah, okay. You don't know. <laughs> you take you take the hit, and you do get one more opportunity to break out of it. And I will say, let's give it a run. Okay, the DC is a 16. So you've got a bit better chance. Only one roll, but a bit, a bit better chance. She's rolling uh, stupid. She's see. rolling stupid. I need to not use the color coordinated dice for her. <laughs> okay, so I roll another saving throw. Yep. Go oh, and no, that's a three. <laughs> wow. No, it would be an advantage. It would be an advantage. Oh. It would be an advantage because it's it's All still right. a charisma Let's save. Yeah. Try again. My my apologies. That's uh, twelve. Mm. Oh, so nice. Um, just unfortunately, the spice, not just my takes the smack in the side of the head, um, and continues moving over to her. Um, so Tarquin is there, but thankfully. Next up in order is is Luto, followed by Bifon. 
So you've both still got one turn <laughs> to All get right. him away. Let me see what I got. But he will be resisting anything you do to get him further away from her. Oh, shit. Hmm. And though this might seem worse, there is interesting lore at play. So, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, DM. Can I say something? Yeah, of course. Mm, shouldn't I be rolling for wisdom instead of charisma for saving throws against being charmed? Uh, let me see. That is a good point. Let me see what the uh, thingy says. It is wisdom. My apologies. Uh, if it's slightly higher, um, you can roll a couple more times now. Yeah, because wisdom I have a plus three and charisma I have a plus one. Yeah, so but, roll roll two more times now. I'll I mean, totally being up. honest, That's with all the numbers I got, even if it was wisdom, <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten it. So it doesn't make a difference, but okay. I think we should keep that in mind. Yes, thank you. No, thank you. Good shout. Yeah. There you go. I'm... I, no, I'm not trying to play the. I'm just, I'm just dumb. But I appreciate being kept honest too. I'm not just here to be like you guys are playing me right now. <laughs> I know. No, no, but it's, just it's, you know, yeah, thank I, you for pointing I, I it out. had that yeah. thought. Yeah. No, thank you. Never be afraid to do that. <laughs> All right. What are we doing? What are we doing? Well, is it still my turn? Okay. Yes. Not yeah, we've done yet, buddy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the uh, D&D Beyond's acting weird. I tried to cast a spell and it gave me some weird pop-up, so... Oh, is uh, it doing it to you too? Where it says you yeah. clicked the thing and it's like... Ah, great, shit. that doesn't oh. fucking help me. <laughs> uh, Ludo shoots a bolt at Tarquin, but only rolls an 8 to hit. 8 doesn't hit, I don't believe. No, my armor class is 18, so... Oh. Jesus, had to be the fucking monk. I uh, I'll still I mean he he's faster than me, but I'll still run over there and you know uh, be right next to him or in between him and the thing if possible and basically just try and sandwich my way so that they don't touch each other. Yeah, you can you can definitely catch up. I mean, the chamber itself is only kind of 30 foot. Um and you all only kind of got to the um got to the corridor out at furthest so um yeah you can be right up all in their business uh for absolute sure all right well i shot a bolt of magic at him and i missed and now i'm just moving over to him and trying to yell at him dark queen oh dark queen <laughs> that's it for me okay Before. how far uh, how far am i from everyone so i'd say you're approximately 20 feet away from the other technically three, I guess we can say. Because uh, you never asked me where I was standing. <laughs> yeah, remember, I walked in ahead. Yes, yeah. And then the and then the shit went down. So you're saying I'm 20 feet away? Yeah. It, it's all, you know, you can get anywhere you need to pretty much within the area. <laughs> I'd like to grapple Tarquin. Yeah, go for it. Woo! Action! Get a little strength check or athletics or something. Ah, uh, I believe grapple. It's your athletics versus his. Uh, uh, I don't know. That might be third edition rules, actually. Let me see. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, athletics check. Yeah, both roll athletics. Or dexterity. Uh, athletics or acrobatics, but whichever you choose, um, Bifon, uh, uh, Tarquin also has to use. All right, athletics, then it is. Rolly! Uh, oh my god, athletics I got a 19. Ah, oh, jeez, of course. Oh, so close. Good shout. So good oh, at being then possessed. Since that failed. Um, I'll use action surge oh. for one more additional action, uh -huh. and I'm gonna shove him. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Unless I can grapple him again. Uh, I would say you can grapple again if you want to. Yeah. I don't know. 
I, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to. You can punch a guy twice. Why can't you just give him a... I'll a grapple one? him again, then. All right. Roll for contested athletics. Uh, oh. 14. 14, okay. 14 as well. <gasps> Rollies again. Rollies again. Mm. I don't know if that's how it works, but I like just rollies, so... <laughs> that's uh, eight. <gasps> Before! Before, how do you grapple? How do you grapple Tarquin? It's like in a bear hug. <laughs> just... just squeeze the hell out of him. Yes! Amazing. Okay. So you can... Um... You've still got uh, oh, do you, 10 feet of movement. Um, you can move with your grappled creature, um, but your speed is halved. Um, okay. Yeah. He is I move, he is move away. Okay. So you move another five feet away. <laughs> so Ludo, if you, if you were waiting to slide in. <laughs> All right, I do. Yeah, no worries. Now is your chance, Darkwin. I've got a couple of rolls to do. <laughs> uh, the first will be. Um, he did. Did you get attacked this round? No, what? you would. You would. So, um, yeah, roll the uh, wisdom saves first. Still an advantage. All right. And then Depending on the success of that, we'll see if we can uh, escape the clutches of people. <laughs> All right. That's a 20. Dirty, Ooh. but that's a 20. Okay, dirty 20 will do it. Uh, you once again <laughs> come to, this time, like a ch sharp seat belt <laughs> of arms around your, <laughs> around your middle. Um, it appears what that... Are we hugging now? Sort of. Just keep your arms down, especially the one with that band on it. Uh, what's going on? I'll I'm tell dead. you when we get the hell out of here. Okay, Tarquin, would you like to resist, uh, just melt into the grapple, or would you like to do anything else? I'll trust <laughs> Beefen. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, we know what time it is. It's top of the round. Oh Somebody's boy. Gonna roll. How many is she gonna? She's gotta be running. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, yeah. No. Okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> Ignore me. Um. Shit. Okay. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Doing character. Um, just give me his amulet and I will leave him be. I'm sorry, we just got here and there is some cocoa outside waiting for <laughs> us. If you'd like us to bring you a cup, I could do that. I just. And I say that in my most feminine voice because I'm still supposed to be Ikta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's even better because Ikta's kind of short, short queen. So it's just like this five foot three um, <laughs> illusion of, of of person carrying the entire of Tarquin in bear hug. Um, you see her eyes dart to the other two of you. You don't know what the power that amulet contains. I need it. Give it to me. Well, Tarquin's holding it, and I'm pretty sure it's very powerful. Um, you sure you don't want that Coco? Because I'm going to get Tarquin some. <laughs> <laughs> He needs it. It's a chocolate and ketchup fiend. We, we must go now. 
She just starts laughing. <laughs> it's fine. I'm not the only one. Our God will not let you rest until we have that. She just stares you down. Unblinking. Time to go, time to go. Hear the chains rattle and close the door behind you. Mm hmm. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. <laughs> and as you close the doors behind you, you just hear this frustrated yell from the chamber echoing through. Uh, at this point, <laughs> Uh, Pithy returns uh, with a big box of stuff. We're all just she can't quite sitting in our over. chairs, I know. pouring with sweat. <laughs> oh no, she she comes over like <laughs> tiny Icta disguise is still holding on to <laughs> Tarquin. <laughs> Ludo's just having a fucking crisis, making sure the doors are still closed. And she can't quite see you guys because of these boxes. Oh, sorry about that. That took a little bit longer than I planned. How are you guys doing? Oh, I'm surprised no. the hot chocolate machine's not empty. <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything is <laughs> fine. <laughs> if you would like to get back to normal before she puts the box I'm going to put Tarquin seems... down. Yep, now's the moment. <laughs> and make sure that they're in front of me and I'm going to pull one of those, uh, what was that? The, the, the glamour scene from the craft. I'm just going to quickly hop out of it. <sighs> yeah, nice. <laughs> I'm, le and, uh, I'm, I'm leaning. I'm just leaning, bro. I'm leaning against the wall. Just leaning. <laughs> <laughs> Roll a performance <laughs> check, Ludo. <laughs> Professional leaner over here. <laughs> That's a hot seven. That's a hot seven. That's all right. You had to beat a six. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I rolled a natural two for Perfect. Pippi. So <laughs> you're all good. So, uh, I think you guys look real comfortable. All right. Uh,. So we've got to take this box out. So uh, while we're here, I'll give you a quick tour of the uh, the rest of the of the town, if you want. Sounds good. good. I sounds good. Let's go. <laughs> and she just kind of looks at you for a second and then just blinks and gets distracted by something else. And doesn't doesn't process in her mind with that nat too. She's just like okay. <laughs> Oh, I'm real glad you didn't go in those doors. That would have, that would have made me so sad, you know. Huh? There's doors here? Oh yeah! Wow, look at that. It's not. <laughs> never do that. I've never do that. Yeah, that was um. Oh, I'm. No, ignore me. Ignore me. She like points at you all. Ign ignore me. I didn't say anything. Um. Okay. So. Who's in that, by the way? <laughs> Just wondering. Who? Yeah, Ludo asks. He's just casually leaning, not even looking at her, still sweating bullets. I mean... Insight check. <laughs> <laughs> that is another nut, too. Perhaps there's no one you need to concern yourself with. <sighs> um, mm. Although she rolled a natural two, you do see her begin to sweat. Okay. Um, and she and she desperately wants to dis. You can see, just fr yeah, she, she rolled on that too, so she's an open book right now. Um, she desperately <laughs> wants to make friends by oversharing things she sh technically should not be telling anyone. Oh. <laughs> I, okay, I will try and, uh, and I'll try and persuade yeah. her to uh, oh tell my us. Am I uh, doing this to a level two? <laughs> to a level two well, teenager. you see, uh, Pity, you know, uh -huh. we're happy to work here for us, but then uh, 
Have you understood? Have you ever heard the good is bad, the bad is good theory? What's that? So if the people who are good have a people who's a prisoner, the prisoner's gonna be bad. But if the people who are bad have a prisoner, the prisoner's gonna be good. So I need to know that the person inside there is a bad person. Otherwise, maybe you're a bad person, right? I seem bad to you. Well, I don't know. It's my first day here. Maybe I'm being tricked. I just want to know if you're going to keep somebody who's a prisoner. Maybe, you know, maybe they're... I want to know what Roll. they did. What? The, why, why are they even in there? Roll a persuasion check for me. <laughs> All right. You ready to see my third natural 20 for the day? Because I'm about to roll it. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll take a 14. It's 18 total. Nice. You really think I'm, I might be evil? Well, not you. Maybe the people here. You know, maybe maybe they have they're you tricked not, too. They're not evil. Well, then prove it to me by telling me who's in there. A bad person. Who? Well, who? Very, very bad person. How bad? Um, by this point, you're kind of walking back out the main doors and into the snow. Ah, uh, real, really, really, really bad. Does this bad person have a name? Uh, not that I remember. I, th I think she does. Hey, look, we're at the, uh, we're at the, we're, um, we're at the lift. And she, <laughs> she points to this, like, large, just very plain wooden lift that goes uh, down from this higher point in the city with the, uh, with the guild halls down into town. And uh, you all step on it and she continues to have a bit of a crisis. You know, really... Um... I don't, I don't remember her name. What did she do? Oh. You know, um, Pithy kind of looks around, making sure there's not too many people about. There, um, she turned half the school to stone. Oh my god, with some kind of armband or what? No. no. Oh, okay. Just, just her and she corrupted our friend and made him do it too. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow, it's a good thing oh, nobody my. ever goes in there. Don't ever go in there, okay? That's uh, bad people in there, probably. Are you nuts? I would never go in there. Yeah, don't. Good. Me Especially too. Especially after what she did to Riordan. Like, it was really bad. The Devil King? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of looks up like, you know him? Yeah, he's, he's the king now? He's the prince what of all the... What did you say, Tarquin? He's a prince? What is it? I know. He's a <laughs> demon. <laughs> I'm going to throw he's up. A, he's, a, he's a tiefling. Um, and, uh, well, he... he uh, in the lift, kind of... Into the snow at the bottom. And uh, you begin to walk into town a lot more. There's, you know, um, there is a pavement... But it's all brickwork and kind of uh, in between snow and stuff. It's quite uneven, but it's not so uneven that it's a danger to walk on for a slippiness. Um, as you make your way through town and she's carrying this massive box. Um, no, uh, he was. He, she made him a demon, kind of. It was really bad. Oh, Do you like some help with that? I'm strong. Uh, you can see her arms are failing. <laughs> her arms are failing immediately. It would no, take I'm, some of the I'm, top I'm boxes good. away. Oh, it's just one box. She's just really small. <laughs> oh. She's like three foot something. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to pass Tarquin a mint, and then I'm going to take the box. How much further do we have to go? Where are we, where are we headed now? Oh, not, not far. We're in the, we're in the town, and we're, 
I'm gonna show you some of the landmarks and places you might want to visit on your travels that were not disrupted by when my friend turned into a big demon guy with, with that evil oh, demon lady. Was that Riordan? Was that your friend? Yeah. Uh... He's okay now, but it took a really long time to make him better. I can imagine. And I turn around and look over my shoulder at Tarquin real quick. <laughs> I always knew that he was a demon. <laughs> well, I feel like shit. Percent. Do you have a bed or something? Well, we're almost at our destination, and you can probably catch some catch some sixies there if you want. Um, speaking speaking, you can see like the the f memories of ultimately a few weeks ago flood back to the, the front of her mind um, as she tries to continue giving you guys this tour. Um, okay, so um, over there you, you, you've, you've probably had um, some of Benoit's pastries before. Uh, it's a chain organization of, of bakeries and stuff. Um, you think they'd go well with the hot chocolate? Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, I really like getting the creme brulee in them with the hot chocolate because it, it's then it's not too chocolatey and rich and it has those undertones of vanilla. That sounds kind of so cozy. Sugar on top. Yeah, no, it's really good. Um, so that's just over there, and he he also has a cooking school behind there. Um, and uh, then. As we go further down here, we have the fire shields shop. It's not a shop of shields that are fire. It's like, ah, oh, dog, these shields are fire. You know, it's, it's a play on words. Um, really good weapons and stuff in there. Um, roll a, per roll a perception check, everybody. For okay. fire shields. <laughs> Such a dumb name for a shop. These shields are fire, babe. <laughs> Got a one for a seven. Oh, um. It's my second natural one. I'm right behind you, Ludo. In your, in your, <laughs> in your mind, you just you see creme brulee and the hot chocolate. Oh. Just, yeah, mentally just devouring it, and it tastes really good. And this place is hosting shields, over whatever. a fire shield. Yeah, you're just oh. <laughs> just picturing like all of these good yummy foods. Uh, what did everybody else get? I haven't got twenty-one. Sheath up today. Twenty-one. Okay, what did Ludo get? I only got a thirteen. In the thirteen. With a thirteen, I like to go in order. It's like as we see more and more from the perspective of the bees. Okay. Um, turned into Mr. Burns there for a second. Ugh. Um, <laughs> um, Ludo, you see in the shop, uh, there are, there are a couple of drunk dudes hanging out in here. Um, you see this, um, this Ergenasi, uh, my apologies, this Water Genasi, um, kind of shop clerk just rolling her eyes at these two, uh, drunk uh, dudes, there's one half orc, one human guy, and they're just like, Oh my god, dude, 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 let's do the thing. Okay, ready, ready. Oh, this shield is fire! Uh. <laughs> Shut the <laughs> fuck up. Um, Tarquin, you also see this, but you also see a door at the back of the shop. Now, you've You've been shopping before. <laughs> I love these weird analogies that it goes into when you get a really good or a really bad role. It's like, you've been shopping before. Uh, <laughs> I say this every week, but it is genuinely so stupid and fun. Um, you've seen doors into the like storage cupboards and, and storage areas of shops. This isn't a storage door into the shop. This is a, a strange door. And as the group just begins to move on to the next leg of the tour, you see that door open 
being held open by this huge arm and another drunk guy stumble out into the shop and the door swiftly close behind him. <coughs> okay. Uh, next up, we have uh, Shellerby's Magics. Now, Shellerby is a great friend of mine, okay? Shellerby is the best. She's um, super pretty. She's, like, the most beautiful person I've ever seen. And her shop has everything. Um, has, like, potions and magic stuff. It's incredible. Uh, <laughs> Pithy's like, it's got things you've never seen, and it's a regular magic shop. <laughs> um, as you walk past, though, you do see uh, this co comedically large alligator folk woman um, <laughs> who barely... It, it's a miracle as to how she fit through the front door of her shop. And you see it is a struggle for her to weave between her, the shelves and the stock without knocking things over. Like, she is perpetually holding up all of the stock as she moves through the store. Um, and she gives a friendly wave to you all as you go past and kind of has to catch uh, a book that she swiftly knocks off of a shelf. <laughs> kind of put it back on and pats it and delicately tries to walk back through. Uh, there's also a granny's oven if you carry on down that road. Some weird, weird food. Probably don't go there. Granny's lovely, but this is weird food. I went there once, and uh, this kid had a muffin, and he just smelt like fish for the next three months. It was weird. Um, and then she kind of comes into this main uh, square area, a circular, a circular square, like the main place. The, the town circular square. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got there. We got there. <laughs> um, here you can see the crooked lantern, which is the inn. Uh, it is just an inn, so you don't have to worry about the drunk people downstairs because those are next door at the wonky chimney tavern. Um, I obviously can't go in there yet because I'm not old enough to drink, but I hear it's nice. You know, um, I hear, I hear there isn't actually any alcohol in there, though. That's kind of one of the rumors that goes around school. Because none of us know if they actually have alcohol there. Um, they're just crazy. Um, and then we're almost there! And kind of heads down a hill kind of towards the outskirts of town. And then we have a really, really cool magic shop. Um, and this is Tos... Oh! And you see that you come to this kind of cottage shop um, that has a sign that said Tostoy's Shop of Curios and Gadgets. Um, but you see uh, on top of that sign is one that says Closed. And there are loads of dudes inside uh, moving the various stock and such out. Um, you do also see um, a blonde, delicate human woman kind of gently weeping outside the shop. Oh, uh, that's, that's new. Uh, What's going on? I guess it's... I guess it's... I guess it's closed. I don't know. That's a shame. Who's that? The owner? Uh, I don't know. It's not Tostoy. He was, he was like a tall, dark-haired guy. Like super fancy suit and stuff. Um, you see the weeping woman kind of catches a glance and realizes that you're all there, but then just continues being sad by the building. <laughs> I'm probably not qualified to sort that out. Ma'am! Uh, <laughs> is everything alright? Um, you see she <laughs> she kind of daubs her cheeks with a handkerchief. Um, 
kind of has Bifon realizes that's an incredibly stupid question to ask. <laughs> she has this uh, slightly wintry uh, knit dress on uh, and a slightly uh, dramatic fascinator veil combo. Oh, um... Yes, quite. Uh, you see, I was quite fond of dear Tolstoy. He's not been back for weeks. Oh, I do worry about him. Uh, question. Who has the ring? The ring? The, the, the ring. crying people ring that I just yes. got? Yeah, I got it. Uh, you feel it buzz slightly. <laughs> <laughs> You, you feel its arcana just pulse gently. Mm. Mm, question is where? <clears throat> um, in the general direction of the of the shop. Mm, oh, that is mm, <laughs> my first uh, guess. Ah, dead body. <laughs> is anybody um checked on him at his home, the shop, anywhere? Or is he just missing? Is he just not opened up? I've checked when I'm at home and written him so many letters, but he hasn't replied to a single one of them. Are you an investigator? No, no. Just wondering what was going on here. Uh, we were being uh, shown around the town. Um, hey, kid, um, do you know where he might be? She shrugs. That is the first time hearing of it. I'm sorry for your loss, ma'am. Uh, kind of awkwardly waves. <laughs> do I need to do a perception sniff? A perception on, on the lady or for dead body? <laughs> for dead bodies. You certainly can you certainly can sniff around for one if you want to. A looter and oh, hey. up to anything. Told you I was right behind you. 26. Hey, GG. <laughs> know exactly where the body is. Yeah, on no account 20, of you I being one who killed him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Are Luto and Tarquin doing anything uh, at this point? I mean, that's, I mean, do we actually know this? Um, you see, you see this all happening. You hear the conversation happening and everything. All right. Um, I'm pretty beat up, so I can't really get into more trouble right now. Ugh. No, I oh. wouldn't hear of it. Oh dear, um, did you get into a fight? It's ever so weird for there to be conflict here. Uh, you know, I just happened to fight some giant seagulls, and that's the life of an adventurer. It is weird, because I never imagined there would be such giant birds attacking people. Mm. Yeah, he's a big old hero. Quite. You've never heard of him? It does ring a bell now that you've said that. His name's well, Tarquin. He was his... That uh, ring any bells? Anything? Yeah. It, it does a little, yes. Mm. Uh, good, pleasure. Good. My name's Sally. Hi, Sally. Hi. <laughs> anyway, I will leave you to it. I'll just be over here reminiscing. And she kind of goes over to the corner. Um. Bifon, you know exactly where that dead man is. Um, you, as you kind of peek your head round the shop door to see where everyone's kind of um, moving all the items and belongings, you do see a casket that uh, is being purposefully left there. Um, and uh -oh. funnily enough, funnily enough, it do be smelling like a dead guy in there. In the direction of the casket. Who would have who would have thunk? It's a fairly oh. fancy casket. It's kind of uh raised. Is the door open? Yeah. Cause there are moving. You just guys walk in? Moving. Oh my out. god. 
The moving guys are not professionals. <laughs> <laughs> but the casket is gonna knock on the casket. Decorated. Oh my god. Hello, everyone there. There is <laughs> to maybe nobody surprise, uh no response. <laughs> Pop that shit open. Oh, hey! <laughs> the, yeah, the door. What a surprise! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll never believe what's in there. Uh, it is. I'd like to search him. A beautifully preserved dead body. Straight away. Beautifully. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um. Yeah, roll. Well, roll I don't the... know the guy, and the people who know him no, no, just no, no. didn't even bother to check. <laughs> That's, you know what? Roll an investigation check. Weirdly enough, I was not prepared for anyone to just do that, but there we go. I got That's a fun. six. Um, well, you do see that he has a very fancy suit on, and as described, um, fairly handsome uh, human man. Uh, Kind of dark hair, some fancy facial hair, definitely a city going folk. Um, where the fuck is he? Where is he? There he is. Uh, let me see what he's got on him. Beep, boop, boop. <laughs> totally normal. Uh, oh, um, well, you see. And are able, should you wish, to take um, ink and an ink pen, uh, a small bag of sand, uh, a signet ring. Yes. <laughs> Those things. I'll take the ring. Uh... Okay. <clears throat> I guess that would be investigation if I wanted to try to figure out what this ring might be off the top of my head. Yeah, um, you could roll a history or um, what Ooh, would like history sounds good. I'd say like a history or a um or a just a flat charisma roll because it would be like a socialite kind of thing. Like the social families and stuff, like a politics check, but that isn't a thing. Um, Not quite, but I have a natural thing with that because of who I am. Oh, oh, yeah, roll at advantage on either. Absolutely. Please and thank you. Mm -hmm. But you do see. Uh, second rolls a 16. Nice. Uh, you see. You'd all see it on the ring itself. Um, the sigil is uh, two um, silhouetted male uh, profiles uh, looking in at each other. And the kind of uh, negative space between them almost looks like an hourglass, but with clockwork adornments. Um... Sorry, I was thinking six... of Conan. Was like, Two snakes facing each other like this. <laughs> With a 16. I don't remember what their surname is. Um, I don't think they have a surname. Let me get them a surname real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know. With a 16, you definitely know the family. Um, okay. You definitely recognize, recognize the family sigil. Um, uh, where is my <laughs> list? You you see the sigil of the um b b b b b of the Tarry family. T A double R Y. Um, most prominently known for their two sons, who got up to a lot okay. of mischief, is the is Ooh. the word around town. Um, 
from the age and appearance, this potentially could be one of them. Or just someone who happened to have the ring and the fortune. Ooh. Hey, Piffy. Yeah. You know this guy? Come. <laughs> Stomps off the snow on her boots and comes in. Mm. No. That's Wait. not the owner? <laughs> yeah. It is the owner. He looks different without the hat. Kind of like seeing a legendary that? hero without a helmet, you know? Mm. I mean, it could be his brother. Sally! Yes? You know this guy? Oh my god. <laughs> she she gets halfway through the door right and then just sees him and goes, Oh god and leaves again. <laughs> I think she recognized him. I think so too. <clears throat> How long do you think he's been here? I... Okay, how long's the shop been closed? I'm sorry. How long has no one checked to see if the shop was actually open and yet closed? I haven't been this this far out in quite a few weeks. Okay. Hey, any of you fellas know how long the shop has been closed? Hey, now we just had to uh, move, move furniture. Okay, so this all helps a lot. Uh, can I do some sort of investigation around the... Uh... Often itself. Can, you can do a medicine check to see how long the body is actually been dead. dead. You can also cast speak with the dead and ask him yourself. With your new shiny hmm. bling ring. We'll we'll do a medicine check first. Okay. Hey, there is a thirteen. Uh it's a couple of weeks there thereabouts checks out. Um Oof. with a medicine check. <laughs> You do also Jesus. notice, oh, Jesus God, um, as you're kind of looking around the body to see if there's anything else kind of in the casket with him that could be a clue, you do see that some of his hair has been very strategically moved um, to sure, hide... Sure, he's not just melting? <laughs> ...to hide what appears to be a plethora of... Um, like a buckshot ammunition. Whatever, mm. whatever got him was a big firearm, and it was up close and goddamn personal. Mm. Thankfully for this guy, fairly instantaneous there. With your CSI beef on. <laughs> mm. CSI the stairs. And nothing in the coffin, just just the body. Nothing else. Just a couple. Now of I'll hours. use the ring. Okay. Woo! I feel like we need we need ominous music for that. Is everybody coming in to watch the dead man talking? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! This whole, time, this whole time, Ludo's just following a few steps behind, just kind of sm kindly smiling. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Let me get a get a stool for Tarquin, so you can have a seat. <laughs> oh, if only you had a three foot tall footstool. Um, that would be really. <laughs> but I could only use these things once. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. you could put it in the fridge of holding. Mm -mm. Make all my fish, <laughs> make all my goose meat taste like stool. <laughs> <laughs> we do need we need we do need to invest in another bag of holding. Um. We just need a scouring, interdimensional scouring. <laughs> okay, Beefon, how does your speak with the dead spell manifest? It's almost like the guy is still dead. Well, yeah, he will be. But he just well well Sorry. it's not like you it's not, it's not like they suddenly look like they're animated or whatever <laughs> like no one else sees this they're still totally dead but like 
Re- but dude, it's some American werewolf in London shit. Oh my god. That's the best way I can describe it. <laughs> Nobody else sees what I'm seeing. Okay. And you hear the <sighs> of a once deceased soul visiting his mortal container once more. Yeah. <laughs> the eyes open and this unholy glow emanates. Cool. Yeah, is... <laughs> you do hear Pithy just go. That's pretty sweet. It's messed hey, up. Hey, uh... What was this guy's name again? Uh, Tosto. Mm. Hey, um... Tosto, uh, I hate to inform you of this, but, um... You're dead, and have been for a few weeks. Uh, I'd like to look into this, see if I can maybe help you out. Um, do you have any idea who might have done this to you? Did you see them? They were behind. Came weeks ago. Made me forget. Oh my god, is... this is a murder mystery. Is there anyone who would mean you harm? I was a ladies' man. Maybe many angry fathers. He goes quiet early as if to suggest he may have had more answers but doesn't remember. Mm. Wasted a question there. Ah, oh, well, he was a ladies' man. I'm just saying. <laughs> that, that's information. All information is information. <laughs> I have two more questions. I wish I hadn't asked the first. Uh, let's see. Let me see. Um, does it say how many spells? Uh, you can ask the corpse up to five questions. Oh, it's so five. We're good. Oh. Five. Yeah. You wouldn't happen to know a Sally, would you? <gasps> Maybe... It... I don't think I knew a Sally. <gasps> um... Do you know where we might find your brother? Oh, what's his name again? Roll a history check. I was kind of hoping to trick him into telling me what his oh. brother Oh, <laughs> um, I see. Um, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, I'd imagine Gustav is in Osprey. Usually he was. Oh. Um, may I, could you be more specific? Well, uh, where does he like to hang out? What are his haunts, or does he have a place out here? Oh. Anywhere there's women, usually. I'd partake in similar hobbies. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll see if I can make some arrangements for you. Um, I hope you had a wonderful life. 
I mean, it sounds like you did. You're a real A's man. So. His eyes and mouth close, and he resumes his peaceful, his peaceful laying. Oh, did I disturb him? <laughs> From his three-week nap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's be better than being shot in the head again. Significantly. See that this gets cleaned up, and, um... Yeah, I'll put in a good word to management. I can't believe you guys left him here this entire time. Oh, no! Hey, no, no! Hey, hey, hey! Don't be putting in negative reviews with management before you know the full story, okay, boss? I wasn't talking to you guys. You finished doing what you were doing. Well, I was just going to say we brought him here first. And then we were asked to clear out his stuff. Wait, what? We were told to ship him here. So he could be at rest at his place of most comfort. And so then, why are they shutting the store know. down? Because he's fucking who made dead. It? Who made this order? I would imagine his brother, but I am not legally allowed to let you know that because that is private information. But maybe for a couple of gold, I might be able to uh, bypass that part of the contract. Ooh. to know. Effie, do you know this Gustav? His brother? I would imagine. Do you know where to find him? Well, the... No disrespect. She nods to the... to the corpse. Dead guy said Osprey. Isn't all of this... Never mind. It is, but he was probably referring to the city. Gotcha. Okay, then. Um, I guess we can continue the tour of your lovely, um, hospitable, a little, um, not-on-the-money town. I'm curious about Let this me... whole murder mystery now. I want to put some of my feelers out. <gasps> see, this is why that bitch Peridot should have... Sorry. This mm. is why my friend Peridot should have turned up. Because her her brother's a big the big lawyer in Osprey. He could probably... He probably knows all about it. Sweet. You really need to unionize. What? 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 Okay. Um, anyway, so this was Tolstoy Shop. It was really good. Um, okay. Um, but we are almost at our destination. Are you excited? Woohoo. Very, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I'm glad. Okay, let's go. I'm sorry, I'm just like playing that whole dead guy thing over in my head. That was gnarly. Okay. And she sets off uh, kind of down the hill slightly further and uh, just kind of tucked behind uh, one of the mountainous outcroppings. You see this particularly large um, it's hard to call it a, a cottage, but it is a kind of large mix of manor house and cottage. Um, purely just in size rather than stature. Um, it's very humble, very warm. This lovely, uh, warm glow from the windows as, uh, afternoon starts to turn to dusk. And, um, you see this house just surrounded by beautiful flowers and garden and, uh, kind of a, a barn or a shed of some sort out back, uh, behind it. So I've got to deliver these here. But these people might be able to help put you up. If you're interested. Yeah, we should uh, probably find Tarquin a place to rest. Sounds good. Um, and she approaches the door. 
and kind of jovially knocks on it, which is tiny because her hands are tiny because she's tiny. And um, you see um, initially what appears to just be this huge poof of red hair open the door um, before it's kind of tucked behind uh, this halfling woman's ear. Um, she's uh, fairly small as well, definitely taller than Pithy, but not considerably so. And uh, you see that um, she kind of tries to scoop her hair back into the handkerchief that is uh, straining within its life's capabilities to hold this mane of red curl back. Um, and she has kind of a very heavily pocketed apron um, that has all kinds of tools and trinkets uh, poking out of it. And uh, you see this kind of uh, four-foot woman open the door. Ah, pithy! And... Oh, this is the uh, company we were expecting. Yep, got him here safely and alive. Although this guy's kind of, kind of hurt a bit. I'm not quite sure. It's something about big birds. Um, I don't know. But yeah, um, can we come in? I, s I do smell food. And she kind of. Well, I have been cooking. It is almost dinner time. Cheeky, kind of. Usher's pithy and who just runs inside like she lives there and um, <laughs> she kind of bows her head to all of you well it's a pleasure to meet you all uh, my name is Willow Willow Gray uh, welcome to my household if you can call it that it's more of a <gasps> menagerie Willow um, Gray. <laughs> um, it's kind of a menagerie there's a lot of us um, Varex are you here? Yeah, I'll be down in a second. Hi, Farrix, my husband's here as well. Um, but there's a lot of us here, but please come in. Um, we have some dinner cooking, so you're welcome to that. And some rest. We have plenty of sofas and uh, mattresses and duvets you can crash on if you need. But please come Sofa. in. No, neither. <laughs> To crash. Of course. There. Um, as as you enter, you see just this super wide, lovely cabin uh, kind of living area with all sorts of cab um, sofas and bean bags and all sorts. What does strike you though is that all the furniture is um, slightly bigger than you'd expect it to be. And, uh, uh, it soon becomes slightly apparent as to why, as you see, um, two, uh, question mark children, uh, run in, um, standing at least at five feet tall each, maybe oh, wow. no older than seven or eight, <laughs> and, uh, play fighting with, um, some cardboard swords. Um, Pithy desperately trying to join in, but is desperately too small and is just being yoked around the place. <laughs> just kind of thump, lands in a uh, in a bean bag. Lucy, you've got to stop hitting me so hard. I'm sorry. I just really get into it. And it's this like five foot tall, slightly uh, green around the sides of her face, tinted, very tan. Um, kid also just with this bountiful batch of curls um that are a slightly darker shade of red everyone just in this family has beautiful variations of green eyes so some of them are uh, quite bright green some of them more subtle and everything and uh, as you all get comfortable in the living room you see that there is cocoa and some snacks out some crumpets and uh, biscuits. You see that uh, you see Varix arrive. Uh, Varix being a <laughs> six foot eight half orc man, um, slightly salt and pepper hair, kind of again tied up, but just in a messy bun. Huge um, peppered um, beard. Um, a slightly tired face, but 
a, a content one, a very fulfilled expression. Also with a Swiss Army knife of apron um, and quite big, uh, definitely workman hands. And uh, they sit down around this uh, large, in many senses of the word, this large kind of wooden coffee table. Just looks like a beautiful natural slab of wood that they've carved into it. So, how are you uh, enjoying Ninut so far? Oh, this is my husband, Farrix, by the way. Say hi. And she looks up at him. <laughs> <laughs> standing like <laughs> almost four foot taller than she is hello uh, uh thank you for welcoming us into your home oh of course of course i mean we've already got uh our fair share of company here we figured why not more uh, yeah you will though there are you know currently nine of us living here um there is definitely peace. You you will sleep through the night if you need to sleep here or want to sleep here, in fact. Ludo um, will uh, look over their kitchen and their cookware and silently judge them. <laughs> <laughs> Roll an investigation check. All right. <laughs> yep. Don't, quest don't question it. This is three, <laughs> four foot and six foot eight. Jesus Christ. I rolled a seven children. I rolled a house. one. <laughs> you you go to like judge the quality of the of the cookware and the pans and everything, and you're just looking at it and you see as uh, some more of the kids filter in as the as food time approaches, and you get, and you just get this little sinking feeling in your heart, and you're like. Why am I why am I judging the quality of this <laughs> cookware? Why am I judging it? Rolling a natural one what, makes me question my self worth. What matters <laughs> What matters is the same thing that matters to you, Ludo, and that's that it's cooked with love and heart. Ludo and fully believes even... that some of the best meals in the world are cooked in humble kitchens like this one. You yes. just wanted to see what the, you know, we've got a big old family. What are you, and, what kind of tool are you using? Some self critique in, in, and like getting in there and first things first analyzing their kitchen. There, there we've been here for like five minutes. I met like nine people. <laughs> <laughs> it's not first things first. <laughs> you've met, you've met four of them. There's another three that live here. Well, they're like bigger, that's so they not, count as more people. There's even more, yeah. <laughs> there's two that have left home, and then there's <laughs> seven kids total. <laughs> All right, he's, doesn't he, really matter he's if they have the Cookmaster three thousand and not the four thousand. <laughs> Perhaps not. <laughs> oh, I see. This is an instant pot house. Okay. <laughs> in actuality there's just a microwave oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm gonna need to raise Ludo from the dead sorry <laughs> no um, Ludo inwardly scolds himself for <laughs> instantly yeah. looking for the kitchen realizing it's a bad habit of his Willow, Willow sees you looking and just goes don't worry dinner will be soon Oh, yes, oh, you uh, will. I'm very hungry. <laughs> he taps his stomach. You will fit in right here very easily waiting for dinner. I mean, I hope it is as good as you're hoping and waiting for. It smells uh, I'm delicious. I'm sorry it wasn't ready sooner. Um, but, uh, yes, please tell us a bit about yourselves and we can, if there's anything specific you'd like to mention, we can or we can... For the sake of brevity, just fast forward to food time, <laughs> which you're so eager about. Uh, um, well, uh, I'm a chef, and uh, I try to travel and try to find different types of meat to eat, different types of uh, monsters to eat, and uh, just try and uh, see as much of the world as I can. You... You eat monsters? And you see a slightly older kid, maybe 11 or 12, 
um, with a huge braid going down her back, a uh, slightly darker colour, um, kind of looking at you with just big, like, curious kitten eyes. You kill monsters and then eat them? Yeah. I mean, we eat a chicken, we eat a goat, we eat a cow. Why not the... Uh... Why not a chimera or like a griffin? Why not? <gasps> Mom! No, we're not eating griffin for dinner. <laughs> She's laughing as as, as uh, her kid just keeps looking between you two. Mom! <laughs> no, we are not eating a manticore. <laughs> What about, I swear, if you say a Bismarck, I swear, Eve, you do not. Yeah, our plates wouldn't fit them, I don't think. But like, how does it, how does it taste? Like, does it grill? Well, I can imagine, like, a Chimera grilling with... Uh, it really depends on the thing, you know? Some things you think is going to be more like chicken, some things going to end up be more like beef. Mm. Curious. I just wish we had something to taste now. <gasps> that would be amazing! No, I wouldn't, Lucy! Stop copying me! No. Well, I, I, could, uh, no. I could cook up something real fast, maybe something to go with tonight's <gasps> dinner. If uh, Mrs. Willow Gray says it's okay. I'm never going to complain for more hands in the kitchen. All right. I'm going to cook up some delicious uh, hippogriff. Do you mm. have hippogriff meat? No, I'm going to make the goose and tell him it's hippogriff. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> So wholesome. And I'll make it do like a big thing. I scare the ooh hippogriff. I'll you know say to the kids, yeah. look at the hippogriff meat. Wow. Wow. You see the two youngest just kind of poke their nose over the top of the kitchen counter to watch. Um, and as like each for every few minutes you cook, you just see another child appear <laughs> until you've got like a line of six of them All just watching. <laughs> nice. <laughs> kind of in height order with some discrepancies. Um, you see one of the older uh, kids, kind of 15 to 16, uh, looks at the the others of you, um, kind of has has like a <laughs> oh god, has like a little bit of the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man hair going on, like slightly emo, but like not fully emo um and they just look at you like so do you do you hunt monsters too doesn't make eye contact <laughs> uh, sorry uh, asking no, I'm... oh uh, asking us uh, us too <laughs> ah, okay i'm a uh... I used to be an adventurer, and then I suddenly became a cat lady, um, investigator, and craftsman, so, yeah, I guess I hunt monsters sometimes. Wait, how, I mean, that's- It's okay. been a long um, day. How, how, how do you become a professional adventurer and cat lady? I'm asking for a friend. Uh, her name is- Beth, she's really into cats, it's not me. <laughs> Professional adventurer? Um, it's just something with, you do. With cats. Some, sometimes you accomplish it, sometimes you don't. Cat lady is a thing that is kind of bestowed upon you. Right. You, you don't really know you're a cat lady until one day you wake up and you realize that's what you are. Like, when, when, when you... When, when Beth... Uh, Beth has already yeah. woken up. Yeah, totally. Uh, she has already woken up and realized that uh, she wants to be a cat lady, and that she is a cat lady. Um, What's well, like step number one through five of that process? Cats. Get cats. Acquire cats somehow. You can put out milk, and they'll maybe come to you. You can buy cats. You can adopt cats. 
if you're really strong in the powers of cat ladydom, they'll <laughs> just migrate to your home like they know. Okay, I thought so because that happened to me, I mean, Beth once, and um, I was like, dude, that's totally a sign. And um, Beth was Same like, strong. No, it can't be. I was like, yeah, it totally is. You should listen to that. It, it can be very rewarding for you, Beth. So, I mean, you know, just <laughs> kind of go along well, with me, it. It is fate. I'm, no, I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not. I don't like cats. Oh, come on. They're cute. They're adorable. They're fuzzy. Sometimes no, their I, eyes are a little bit too much to the side, but. I hate. I hate their really, like, soft whiskers. <laughs> Fluffy tails the most. Can I tell you a secret? You have to promise what's not that? to tell anyone, though. I mean, we only just met, but uh, what's up? No, you gotta promise me. This is, this is <laughs> Shoot. Roll me. I'm Beth. Like, <gasps> you. Your name is Beth? Well, no. no. My, name, my name is Alfim, but um, uh -huh. I... The, when I was talking about Beth and my stories, I actually met you. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> So you're like two people. No, I'm just. Oh I'm wait, just... no, no, no! I got a, your I'm Beth. Me. Beth wasn't a real. Per... Gotcha. Yeah, I'm all of them. Do you have a friend named Beth? No, nah, she's kind of a dick. No. Oh. She oh, was the one that was like, "You're not a real cat lady," and I was like, "I don't think that's yours to gatekeep, Beth." Honestly. It really isn't. It's just a thing that yeah. happens. There's not a lot you can do about it. You yeah, just one she's... day you wake up, you get a bag full of cats. Yeah, but she's friends with Clarson and, and Wendell, and they're just dicks. So. Just, just dicks all around. You don't want to be in that circle. No. That's that's where you need that's to be. That's why I like them. Yeah, because like if they're dicks, you kind of deserve. You've done something, you know. So you yeah. do like cats. Yeah, of course I like. It's we embrace it then. Okay. Sometimes, I, not to be fatalist or anything, but sometimes you just need to kind of just let fate carry you where it's going to take you. It's, it's important to do. Sometimes fate has the best in store for you. I mean, you can't go wrong. It's cats, man. That's precious. That's fate's looking looking out for you. I like I like that. Thanks, man. Yeah. Comes out like the tiniest fist bump. Oop. Um, mom and dad, uh, can we, you know, in our family meeting tomorrow, can I can I add something to the agenda? Uh, you're coming to it often? Yeah, I, I guess why not? It's stupid, but like, I guess I'll come. Yeah, sure, honey. You can you can do that. Kind of looks to <laughs> looks to barracks and <laughs> barracks looks back to Willow, just like what the fuck. <laughs> And he's finally come to admit it. <laughs> um, <laughs> that one little thing was too real. It's stupid, but <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so dumb. But like, I'll be there. What time does it start? Three. I'll be there at two fifty-eight. <laughs> exactly. The accuracy is so on point. Oh, I never. We're, was we're working through some stuff but... today. <laughs> I never was that teenager, but I always, I always wanted to be. That's just, that's just not fun. Really... You mean your, your, your friend Beth wanted to be? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do you want to, do you want to do this? It's like, no, uh, no, that's dumb. But I, like, I guess I'll come anyway. Whatever the fuck. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. That, that movie. That sounds really fucking dumb. I'm gonna come along and laugh at it, and I will have two popcorns, and also, please don't talk in the middle of it, because I kind of want to know, see what's happening. Just so I can, like, see how dumb it is, and then watch a video essay on how dumb it is. Hey, do you like cats? Because I actually, I, I fucking, I fucking hate cats. I, I hate cats a lot. Oh, actually, I like cats. Yeah, I fucking love cats. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Often found his people. Um. <laughs> but if you if you want to know the other half, like really, really want to 
want to know it. I mean, there's no better adventurer than that guy right there. Hi. <laughs> you know him, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, look, he's... look at that gray skin. Is... Roll something real quick. Uh, uh, no, yeah, Beautiful I totally, white hair. Yeah, I totally know him. Totally, right? What was the yeah. name again? <laughs> Hope, kid, you're on your own. Wait, but he knows Cat. Okay, whatever. That's enough learning for one day. <laughs> Just kind of goes back over to a beanbag and reads reads um <laughs> reads a totally normal magazine that doesn't have a cat magazine folded into it. <laughs> Uh, he got a natural too, but because he he's also fond of bands that no one's ever heard of, he just went along with it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, Ludo, I would like for you to roll a performance check to try and convince these children that you are cooking hipogri. Oh my god. And there's only six children to beat, so... Fourteen. Okay. One of them's got your number. <laughs> <laughs> Only one of them. That's not hippogriff. Um <laughs> So the all but like you see one of the littlest ones. Like she's got her nose like rested on the counter, but she's just like squinting a little bit as you tell this tale of like what is the tale you tell of the, of the griff hippogriff you slayed? Yeah, I'll you spin some huge Italian. fight. I'll probably, you know, I'll probably take the fight of us fighting the Wolgernon and then just replace the Wolgernon with the hippogriff. Nice. Why well, didn't... Well, and all the kids are like, Wow, that's so cool! Hell yeah, I'm gonna eat that. And just the dinkiest one just goes, Why didn't the hippogriff fly? Oh, because he said there was a kid who asked too many questions, and uh, in in and uh, when he asked too many questions, the hippogriff couldn't fly all of a sudden. Roll an intimidation check, and it will be contested. This kid is gonna try and <laughs> stare you down. I'm gonna roll a natural twenty. I'm gonna give this kid a complex. I'm also gonna roll a natural twenty. I rolled a seven. Kid is already complex. <laughs> I rolled a fourteen. <laughs> Oh, that's really funny because I am a kid that asks uh, way too many questions, and the hippogriff tried to come uh, and get me. Um, uh, but then it saw me and it got really scared. But you, you know what it did then? It flew, it flew away. Oh wow! Yeah, because you're so scary. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. So why didn't it fly when you were fighting? Me? Yeah, I don't know. It's probably a really dumb one. Maybe you can taste the stupid one later on when I cook it. Are you sure it was a hippogriff? Yeah, pretty sure. It had a big old sign said uh, Mr. Hippogriff. Roll a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> Today has been the episode of Lying to Children. Yeah. <laughs> and interrogating the dead. <laughs> I'm here for I'm it. I'm a pro at lying to kids. Just ask my kid. Uh, 22. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, really? It had a sign on it that said that it was a hippogriff? Well, yeah, I wasn't going to kill it, it if it wasn't a hippogriff. Was his name Mr. Hippogriff or something? <laughs> uh, it used to be. <laughs> now it's dinner. But that kind of checks out, actually. I think if, you know, you're wearing a sign that basically lets people know that you are edible hippogriff, then someone's just going to cook you, you know. Yeah, especially me. I'm definitely going to cook you. Tossing the, the, tossing the the pot around slanging. Wow. Yeah, Wenny, why did you doubt that he killed the hippogriff? I was just wondering because he didn't mention it flying. And hippogriffs where we like flying. It's like Pegasus's but but um but different. It's good uh, to sometimes, you know, doubt the things that people tell you. It's good to have a little bit of doubt. 
Like maybe you go to a place, they tell you don't open the door because there's a big monster in there. And then sometimes you open the door and, you know, you got to see if there's a monster in there because, you know, you've heard of the good bad theory, of course. Yeah. I explained to them the exhaustive good bad theory <laughs> about prisoners <laughs> while I, you know, s splashing in some well, soy sauce and so, stuff. So, wait, so if. If we should doubt everything um, from someone we don't know who is good or bad, then does that mean we should doubt that you're actually cooking us hippogriff? Yeah. Like, like when he said, "Okay," and the other the other five kids are gonna do a person, do an insight check on you. <laughs> do you still have the flower oh because you can give it every use. He had a poison flower. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so please, what was your what was your last deception? Oh, it was a twenty-two. Well, I can just tell you that three of the kids got a uh, natural one and twos. So uh, let's see about the other three kids. What the fuck? That's another natural two, a natural four, and a fifteen. They all kind of squint at you. No, that seems that seems to be hippogriff. Yeah, see. Yeah, I don't doubt that. Sometimes doubt people that. lie. Me, I will never lie. Also, your mother and your father will never lie. I think they do lie, though. Do they? But what? Well, yeah, cause mom mom says that sometimes. Uh, it's not snack time. And then <laughs> I walked past her room and she was eating some snacks. Willow Gray was eating snacks when she said it wasn't snack time? My God. <laughs> you know, kid, you shouldn't pass your parents' bedroom at night. Just <clears throat> remember that. Why? Yeah, no, Tarquin, why? why? Yeah, Tarquin. Yeah, tell us, Tarquin. What if they're having a nightmare? Well, if you hear screams, they're probably um, something that is why going to... Why would they hurt. be screaming? <laughs> because uh, you ask too many questions and they are traumatized <laughs> and then they get together in the bedroom and start screaming, but why they... we have to deal with these children? No, but stop pushing always... me. But they say that when I ask too many questions, they just go, Oh, Wenny. They don't, they don't scream. Well, uh, you just remember not I to mean, go near. I mean, they do scream, but like not at you, Wenny. Oh, these kids. <laughs> They're not even mine, no, so... and I already want to so, kill but, myself. So, like, level with me, I'm 13. I, I'm old enough. Oh, uh, what are they doing? I like your hair, by the way. It's really cool. My hair? Yeah. Oh, it's a uh, natural silver. Cool. So why see, you are the cool? smart one of all of the children, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is why you should tell me what they're doing at night. They do, uh, you know, work-related things. I don't know about that. I think they're doing a ritual. And then, because they've been in there a few times. And then, like, there's always another sibling after, <laughs> you know? Ah, yes, the summoning ritual, yes. <laughs> it's a summoning you will understand ritual. when, yes, you will understand when you grow up. But when you summon something, doesn't it exist in another realm or another plane? Well, uh, I mean, everything has to have an origin, right? Yeah, that's what I just said. But if it exists so in origin? another plane, then the other plane must have another plane before it, so it never ends. No, but if something is born in another realm and then, you, and then mom and dad are summoning it to this realm... Well, I'm gonna leave you with that thought. If you are, if your brothers have been summoned, then maybe one of them is a demon. That's all I'm gonna say. Mm. Goodbye. 
<laughs> you see, <laughs> you don't see the like the cinematic bars at the top and bottom of the screen close into his eyes as he squints <laughs> and looks at his things differently. But it is happening in his mind. They see him. Uh, this is the hardest boss fight they've ever had to face. Vic, yeah, why are for you real. Looking at me like that. Let's roll for initiative, kid. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> just, just turns into fucking battle royale. <laughs> um, and with that, uh, dinners are served. Uh, Ludo, what what is the uh, hippogriff meal you are serving? It is uh, uh, chicken a la king, but it's hippogriff a la king. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, and you see Willow Gray take out just the the gosh darn biggest motherfucking with an A motherfucking lasagna. Oh my You've god! Ever done <laughs> insane. This is a lasagna for ten plus people, man. This is mm. with with the fuck you think? Leftovers. <laughs> And they're, you know, they're big kids. The littlest one is like five foot. Because <laughs> there's some half orc blood in there. <laughs> I hope they're fast. I'm about to go Garfield on this lasagna. <laughs> and because lasagna, there's also some lovely salad to the mm. side. It's some homemade dressing. And naturally, like three baguettes worth of garlic bread. <laughs> Nice. So, you all eat up. Um, partway through the meal, um, you see um, Pithy return with uh, Luca and um, Umberlai, who join in and um, also eat. <laughs> um, and Willow looks specifically to you, Ludo. Hmm. So you said this is Hippogriff? Uh, yeah, you can tell because it's extra... You, you feel that chewiness in the fibers? Normally, mm. uh, you know, a normal kind of chicken is not going to do that, but because it's a Hippogriff, it's extra tough because they're so strong. Because... And I might be misremembering. But I thought that Hippogriff was more of, like, a lean uh, steak meat rather than this kind of gamey meat. Yeah, yeah, usually, but this one was extra tough, and I give her a... a I look over to the kids, make sure they're not looking, and then I give, them a, I give her a quick wink. She, she, she blinks at you knowingly, like, she, she, got, she got fucking 19. She sells you out. Everyone else is like, mmm, delicious hippogriff. <laughs> it's fine. I'm not trying to fool her. I'm just trying to... <laughs> Wait, let me roll for Luca. <laughs> get these kids off her back for a bit. Luca also is like, mmm, delicious hippogriff. I'm rolling a lot of twos today. <laughs> um, and as the meal comes to a close, it once again begins as there is... Um, uh, a lovely tray bake, huge cake um, for everyone. Enough to have a little slice each with some rainbow sprinkles on top. Nice. I figured we'd uh, crack out some yummy food to celebrate our new lodgers for the time being. Thank you, Willow Gray. Of course. Hmm, you know. Varric's helped out as well. And uh, in the morning, he's hoping to take you out to the workshop and see if there's any way we can give you anything that could help on your journey. And uh, yeah, because we both help out at the, uh, at the Smithing Guild as visiting tutors. So um, I do more kind of the... Uh, gizmos and gadgets and stuff, and Varix here does more of the stonework and woodworking. 
and they're both really, really good at it. And they help tutor people who want to be on that course, but don't necessarily have the funds for uh, the, the courses. So they help them get scholarships. Oh, it's really nice. We do our best. But, uh, right. Okay, kids, time to get ready for bed. You know the... You know the ordeal. We don't need to get involved anymore. Please. <laughs> and you see the kids all kind of get up and go various directions to get their jammies on and brush teeth. And you see a slight fight between Lucy and Winnie, the two smallest ones. Um, <laughs> Lucy the, and Winnie. The two, the two smallest five foot tall uh, ones who <laughs> uh, fight over... Uh, a blanket and then end up just both crashing in it um now we do have a loft area that should hopefully be good for you guys it's nice and enclosed and soundproof um we've got a couple of rooms uh so we have the master suite that has a good few beds i think enough for everyone uh but we were warned in advance <laughs> that uh there is a couple among you yep bingo and i put my arm around umbrella's hips and raise my hand <laughs> umbrella just kind of <laughs> 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 having been sorting stuff out most of the day just yeah um we also have a couple of beds pushed together in here should you wish for a more private oh we would never with all these kids around no you <laughs> umbrella is already on the bed <laughs> she said it was soundproof plus i, I, I counter that deception <laughs> <laughs> which deception <laughs> Ifon rolls his eyes real big like. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're not ones to judge. <laughs> but, um, you are welcome to this room as well. And there is a bathroom just down the corridor for any and all of you. And uh, we're on the other side of the loft space if you need anything. Uh, Umberlai crawls across the bed towards you, Ludo. I found a silent scroll. I know, I prepared the silent spell as well. Okay. <laughs> 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 Ludo's already prepared. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I did, <laughs> I, did, I did, and it's actually it's on my character sheet, and it's for exactly this reason. <laughs> Called the ceremonial feast for healing, lots of healing stuff, some offensive spells, and then just one for good down. Yeah, you, you do one for them, one for me, you know? Back and forth. Oh my god. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> The only challenge will be staying in the bubble area of effect. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, is there anything anyone would like to do before bid? Uh, yeah, I'd like to actually have... <laughs> I'd like to actually have a little scene uh -huh. with Umberlai. Maybe afterwards yeah. in, the, in the afterglow. Oh, you said before bed. <laughs> Before I, either is valid because you're still technically not getting a long rest. <laughs> so, okay. Um, uh, basically, I just want to do a little scene with, with Umberlight while I, while I have it. I prepared for this last week and never got around to it. Go for it. Oh, well, we're by the way, long rest? maybe well, something's going to happen. Sorry. You said we're not getting a long rest? No, not. Um, as, um, specifically for Ludo and Umberlai, they're not getting a long breath oh, before they oh, cast silence, okay. which is now Ooh. going to be the uh, <laughs> the term for it. it. Used to be fade to black, <laughs> and now it's just cast silence. <laughs> mm. No, you will get a long rest. 
I uh, I figured out my three. You ready? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. One. I had my first kiss at the age of five. Oh. Two. Uh, oh. <laughs> I might have eaten a person. Um, and three. That escalated. I once started a fire trying to boil water. So, one or two of them are true. Uh, it's... I thought we were doing two lies and a truth, right? She's just... She's just oh, she's asking. asking Ludo, oh. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, he'll be like, yeah, I thought the game is two lies and a truth. Okay. So only one of them is true. Yes. You had your first kiss when you were five. Mm-hmm. You... You know what? I'm going to leave the middle one out. And what was the last one again? I once started a fire trying to boil water. I mean, that is possible. So when you say you maybe ate a person... Yeah. Luto... <laughs> Care to elaborate? Is that part of the game? I thought you just gotta choose which one. Would you care to elaborate? I mean, come on. Obviously, that one is the lie. Is one of the lie. I just put it in there for a joke. <laughs> she's she's gonna. <laughs> oh wait! Oh no! Oh no! Wait! Oh no! Oh no! Where is she gone? I always lose her. This is maybe not the song for this discussion. This song always breaks my heart and it's just like, nah, wait, though. <laughs> Did you eat a person? <laughs> it's like one of the most heartbreaking parts of any game I've ever fucking played. It's like, but did you eat a whole ass man? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's perfect for that reason. Um, darling. Yeah. I love you. And remember. You love me? <laughs> Her face just freezes. And we said we wouldn't have secrets from each other anymore. Yeah. Wow, I'm so shocked you said that. My God. Oh, I... I love you, of course. Wow. Hello, I love you. I, I love you, too. Did you eat a man? Umberlai? Of <laughs> course I do not eat a man. What are you talking about? That's just a, it's just a joke one. Come on, it just, it's between the kiss and the water, Inside of course. Check. <laughs> Inside check. Why would you bring it out? It's just a joke. <laughs> Obviously, nobody would ever do that. That's the worst that's, ever. That's, that's a 14. He wasn't wearing clothes. <laughs> just... <laughs> I mean, this is can... so funny with this music. It's really <laughs> in the best way. <laughs> I mean, funny. Not, that I, not that I had oh to roll a deception God. check, but I did roll a natural 20. Not that I had to, of course. Nobody would have ever eaten a person. So, so, so why, but why bring it? That seems like such an oddly specific thing to bring up, Luto. It's just, it's so disgusting, obviously. You wouldn't want to be with someone who might have eaten a person, of course, right? But don't put this on me! No, no, of course not. Nobody would want to be with someone who might have eaten a person. So... Obviously, it's just a joke one. Because but why no wouldn't you just say, I ate a person? Yeah, I, guess, I don't know, I guess. I, I, it's just a joke one. I just It was between the other two, really. That one's just gross. Luto, why you say that? It's so gross. Wow. <laughs> okay. Because nobody in their right mind would ever stay with someone if they might have eaten a person, right? She puts a hand on your lap. And if 
they're in their wrong mind? Uh, then, you know, it doesn't matter, right? It's just a joke, so it doesn't matter. Okay, okay. Um, I'm, I'm gonna say that, um, the, 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 the water one's true. It is, of course. <laughs> I got the, my first kiss at the age of seven, though. Oh. Look Who at from? me. Look at this handsome face. It, 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 well, you're not wrong. <laughs> but, like, okay, so you didn't eat a person. You didn't of course. Eat a person. No, of but course. That, so... Why bring it up, is my question. I don't know. I thought it might as well be in something like I had sex with the dragon. Or I, you okay, know... It's not real. Ex exactly. It's so ridiculous. No one would ever do that. It's, it's just an obvious, uh, you know, what they call it? A pink fish? Red herring. Luto. You can be honest with me. Is the eating a human a fantasy of yours? Umberly, no. No, no, no. I would know. No, not, not in life, but, you know, in the bedroom. Oh. So say, and she kind of um, takes a ribbon out of her hair and... <laughs> puts her hands behind her head. This has gone just, down a very yeah. weird road. <laughs> you got a 20 for a deception. She had to go somewhere I with did. the curiosity. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Sometimes a 20 backfires, guys. Just heads up. <laughs> <laughs> some, genuinely, some of the worst things that have happened to me in D&D &D have be, been because of natural 20s. No, <laughs> no word of a lie. I rolled a natural 20 on a persuasion check. You know what happened to that guy? We went into this house and then he got beheaded. He wouldn't have got beheaded oh if he my didn't God. with me. So, you know, <laughs> make of that what you will. <laughs> Umberlie. You know, obviously, sometimes you're so beautiful, I just want to eat you up. And, uh, yes. you know, I wouldn't mind take a little nibble out of you every now and then. But no, not even as fantasy do I want to eat you. Eating a person is disgusting, okay? I don't want to talk about it. It's disgusting. It's just a joke. I wish I never said it. I would never do that. Not even as fantasy. I hope nobody has ever eat a person. That's why if it has clothes, you don't eat those, right? You want to go for a walk? It's hot. <laughs> wow, it's hot in here. Let's go for a walk. <laughs> he starts There's putting on his clothes. Of... There's plenty of snow and darkness outside. Yeah, maybe just a little walk in the snow. It's so hot in here. Wow. Are you okay? Are you okay? It's, so, it's okay. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. This is a safe space to explore whatever fantasies. I don't... Yeah, I just... I don't know. I don't want to go out there. It's cold. It's too cold. I don't want to go out there. Okay. I'll just... I'll just... She kind of precedentation some petally wind towards you to cool you down. He smiles and, you know, leans in and holds her hand and tries to kiss her to change the subject. You know I invented that move, but I approve. I learn from the best. And I cast silence. <laughs> <laughs> right at, the at the crescendo of the music as well. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. So, are, uh, are Tarquin and Beefon doing anything? Um, bear in mind, the silence was only on for this, the saucy bits. So, it's up to you if you want to roll the perception check to see if anything's going on. <laughs> Reese says, get out of my house. 
<laughs> oh my god. What happens in the spare bedroom stays in the spare bedroom. <laughs> I mean, I already had enough trauma for today, so I don't need to know what happened there. <laughs> If the silence was only on for the action, uh, Bifon falls asleep um, with some really disturbing and hilarious conversations in his head, and he's going to have a very nice, nice rest. <laughs> he's just smiling. <laughs> Wonderful. Tarquin. Yep. <laughs> Hi. Oh, um, it's just, oh, it's just time. scary music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. being a DM. <laughs> oh. Yeah, go sober. <laughs> Bifon looks down and notices he has Tarquin's face mask. He's like, oh, he must have dropped this when I grabbed him. <laughs> oh, shit. Damn it. I hope he doesn't need this. <laughs> you find yourself on some paved streets. No snow in sight, definitely not similar to the streets you've been on or around this last day. Opposite from you, you see three people and a crowd of unfamiliar faces blurring into each other, encircling this whole scene. Behind you, tall body, strong, muscular, grabbing your shoulder not as a friend, in restraint. To the side of your head, something metallic and hard being poked, taunting you. You look down at your body and see a rather fancy suit in blue. Directly opposite you. A couple of figures. One who looks identical to the corpse you saw earlier. But with a red suit. Hidden in the crowd another familiar face slightly hard to make out a blonde seemingly humanoid woman familiar but too distant to place and the third person perhaps most distinct and surprising of all In your heroic moment, you see these onlookers amongst them, a friend, acquaintance from the monastery, a slight animalistic shape to their face, almost ape-like with pointy auburn hair and a monk suit not dissimilar to that which you wear on your legs or to staff raised all looking on in trepidation concern For a moment, the vision flickers to the haunting eyes 
of the drow in the chamber of give it to me you see it flicker again to your armband in your hand flickers back to the black eyes flickers back to the paved street the man in the red suit reaches out to you flickers to the drow woman who reaches out to you flickers to your hand wrapping around the armband you hear the scream of the drow woman and as the doors close in your mind in this void you hear And wake up the next morning. Which is where we're gonna leave today's episode. Oh my god. Mysterious <laughs> nightmares. You know, if we had sanity as a stat, it would be in zero for my character right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is, this is, yeah. He's had a day. <laughs> It had it has been a day. Ah, great session. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. That was that was fun. Woo! So much stuff going on. Yeah. Thanks. So much stuff. Thanks, chat, for all the new subscribers. The record-breaking amount of bits that I did every Jeez. noon could even get that high. <laughs> Thank you, V, for that. Thanks for uh, being here. Thanks for listening. Mm. Thanks, Ree, for letting me have sex in your house. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ree, for supporting the project and uh, <laughs> buying. <laughs> I'm quitting. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, supporting the project and getting a character of yours in the project. I'm sorry. They were this great. Happened. <laughs> <laughs> your kids are wonderful, though. Um, for those who are curious. Oh, excuse me. I'm getting a Facebook call. <laughs> Jesus. Amazing. So, you know that of the children that are here, <laughs> that have not moved out, there is Ulfim, the cat, the cat lad, uh, Phil, Deline, Vic, Zara, Eve, Lucy, and Winnie. <laughs> and I love all of them. <laughs> I love Lucy and Winnie. That's great. Oh yeah, they they always at each other's throats. That's great. When he's when he's the wily one though, when he knows how creatures. It's like, hang on, why that why that hippogriff no no flying no? That don't make no sense. <laughs> and we met Piffy. Freaking love Piffy, my girl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so fun story. Um, this is not the first campaign that has taken place in Isafray. Um, the others have taken place off stream. And Ninut was most prominent in the very first campaign that was run. Um, in more of a traditional D D style rather than text adventure, and a lot of shit went down in Ninu. In case <laughs> the lore wasn't apparent on that, so it's it's interesting to come back to it after a few years and play the literal after effects of of what happened there. Um, and a lot of a lot of a lot of kind of pinpoints on the uh, on the chalkboard were kind of drawn together. We figured out why Etiran and Riordan knew each other. We knew why he slightly closed off when you all called him Demon Savior. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> um, we know that at one point a lot of the school was turned to stone. Uh, yeah. Pithy, Pithy's friend is a is a bitch who ditched her. Might might see her around and about. 
Pippi's great though. She's she's so shit, but they were like, she's she's got a lot of spunk. We gotta give her something to do here. <laughs> Pippi was fun. I like Pippi. Yeah, I, I I love her to bits. Um, I forgot I actually have a character sheet for her. I was like, ah, my girl. She's fucking level two. <laughs> oh, and hey, there's uh, one more NPC you forgot to give the name of. Yeah, who's that? Uh, who's that one? Uh, oh, who's that little darling gal we met? The little darling. Yeah, remember that sweetheart behind the door? What was her name? What was the name of that darling lady? <laughs> oh, that's right. Nobody's told you her name. Oh, yeah, but you were about to tell us though, right? So what was it? <laughs> <laughs> Piffy would say that. Around the halls, she is known as Bast. B A S T. Oh. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, she she's um. I wasn't hoping you would open the door, but also part of me was because again, the lore <laughs> is interesting. Um, the art there's an armband that's a thing, and she wanted it really fucking bad. Because <laughs> I was like trying to lay out everything that was in the city that I needed to remember, and I was like, "Oh yeah, Bast really wants that. That's right. Oh." That's fun. <laughs> oh, enthrall, you say? <laughs> well. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, she, she is kept behind those doors for good fucking reason. A very good shout to detect uh, good or evil on her, though. That was a phenomenal mm. shout. That could have gone significantly fucking worse. <laughs> um, her performance is very good, so she would have been begging to let her out. Oh my god. Could have been a very yeah. different campaign. Uh, really, really fucking good, yeah. Very different, very short campaign. <laughs> I was gonna say, we just got <laughs> off the ship. <laughs> yeah, it was worth opening that door, though. Didn't get caught. You know, you found out what's behind there. You found out why she's behind there. Found out some more about the school. Wouldn't have found all that out if it wasn't for that, so. Lore. Worth the risk. Yes. Lore. And also Tarquin's dream at the end. Yeah, Did you guys get it? There? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tarquin, do you remember who that third person was? Or would you like yes. to know history? You do? Oh, no, oh. I don't remember who he is. Oh. I know his name. <laughs> okay. What is it? But they don't know him. Mm. That's right. <laughs> He's cute. He's my like, not no metagaming right here. Not on this one. <laughs> not be in this house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trying to uh, social engineer guys... some information. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is, is what you did with uh with the brother, just like, yeah, where where's your brother again? What what was his name? <laughs> this is very very nicely done. <laughs> one Lucky day you will you. understand. For one question. Yep. Lucky I assume we will. Lucky for you, he's kind of a dumbass. He's smart, but he's kind of a dumbass. Hmm. That's kind of why he got himself killed. Kind of. A little bit. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. We'll find out. I'm not saying no more. Okay. Ooh, I'm excited. And we didn't. We didn't get all the way through my plans. So that means we can do the fun thing. Potentially next week, potentially with a new friend. <gasps> Big surprises next week. Oops. Big surprises. Did I say something? <laughs> the other fun thing? The other fun thing? Well, because this is always the fun thing. Yeah, this yeah. is the fun thing. Holy yeah. But yeah, we might have a. 
Well, friends is always here, but we might have some even more friends. Oh my god. Next week. Oh my god. That's an end of stream exclusive for y'all guys, so <laughs> keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> well, we hope that is very exciting. We're, I'm very excited. Um, and yes, it's so hard, so hard losing Iloro <clears throat> to big, big goose flew her away. Oh. I was like, that's pretty cool. You get to fly away on a big giant. It's called Galinda. When you say big goose, it sounds like big tobacco or something, or like <laughs> 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 big pharma or something. <laughs> it's like the industry of big goose <laughs> took the her big away. Big goose industry. Some golden egg corporation in giant land. <laughs> oh my god. And also, look at the beautiful Ninut. Ah! It's really forcing my hand to get good at environment art. I swear to god. Must He's always so practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shout out to Dreams on PS4 and 5 for having my back when it comes to all the background <laughs> art. I, and I shout out to Key, the eternally yeah. amazing DM. Thank you so much, Key. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you guys so much. I think I think Olfin was my my proudest achievement today. Cat 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 fan <laughs> teenager. <laughs> I never, never got to be that teenager. I'm so sad. I was just boring. <laughs> it's like, no, man. Yeah, I don't even cats like cats, are... so whatever. I don't even... Yeah, they're so dumb and like their <laughs> fucking whiskers are like so floofy and stupid. I fucking hate them. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Yes, thank you guys for coming along. Thank you for watching. Thank you for chatting and supporting in any way whether it's sharing or donating biddies or subscriptions um or going to the coffee and checking it out because if you even if you only support once on coffee for like three three dollars you can get you can see stuff in advance before anyone else <sighs> secrets you can also get mp3s of the music that i forgot to bring today <laughs> um <laughs> that i make for, specifically for the campaign um that i forgot to bring today um you can also get you can name a character you can name you can get art and a name and a character sheet of a character and one thing i think is really underrated is one of our cheaper options which is to name a thing so you can hmm. name like a magical broomstick. You can name a tavern. You can name a sword. Like you can name just some weird miscellany in the world. I think that's that. That's the excitement for me. I'd be like, I want to name that tree. It's called the the <laughs> butt face tree. And then it's like, no, you have to have. You canonically have to have a butt face tree. So, just an three foot footstool. Three foot. <laughs> Foot foot. <laughs> yep. There is also the magical equivalent of the three foot foot stool. Foot foot. It doesn't do anything different, it's just magic. Foot foot. Foot foot. <laughs> I found the name of my my next character. <laughs> foot foot. <laughs> oh, right. Are you, is Ludo gonna die? Do you need some help? He might. I don't know. Holding in. God. <laughs> Eating all this crazy stuff. Who knows? Something's gonna catch up to him. It's was possible. And yes, you can check out all of the episodes on YouTube when when we remember to upload them. And I say that because I forget, and then I'm like, hey, did you see, did you see this thing? Yeah. I like, know. Oh, we all forget. <laughs> <laughs> but bless JC for uploading all of them. It's very appreciated. Bless me. And you for keep the her beautiful... hosting us. And the beautiful always, always character. a pleasure. Did you guys like the little character overlays? Was that helpful? Do we need to make a thousand more? Do we yes. need to make one for each of the nine children in the gray household? <laughs> Whatever you wish to do. <laughs> I did make heart like a quarter of them in Dragon's Dogma. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and then I was like, I give up. <laughs> 
So check out the Twitter and we'll post them and all of the stuff. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you. I'm I'm rambly because I'm sleepy. But thank you guys so much for your support, for your love. Keep your eyes peeled. I know it's been a bittersweet one today. Um, and it will be bittersweet for probably ever. But we will have lots of good stuff to come. So stay tuned. Keep your eyes peeled. Maybe we'll have more friends to make. Right. Um, and maybe, you know, Ludo and, uh, <laughs> Ludo and Umberlai will have more, um, es strange conversations of, about fantasies, uh, in other places. Good night! Good night! Don't sample it! <laughs> Bye, everybody! Bye. <laughs>